streaming live right in your face, right in your homes, right here on Twitch TV. We have an incredible three hours of gaming related talk and content coming for you. All proceeds go to the Laughter Heals Gaming Foundation. It's raising money for us gamers. We need it. We're, a, we're an odd bunch of people and we need that cash. We need that help. And tonight, we're gonna to be talking gaming with some of the biggest names in comedy right into your homes. Tonight on the stream, you are going to be hearing from and talking to about all things games from such comedy lumineers as Alonzo Bowden, Don Friesen, Bruce Jingles, Zara Mizrahi, and Craig Shoemaker. I am just one of your three incredible gamer nerd hosts. My name is Ben Morrison. You will be joined in the stream by your other two hosts, the wonderful Rima Don and Georgia Van Tylenburg. I think I'm saying that right. I know I'm saying that right. They're both incredible <laughs> comedians and they're both big gamers. And I just heard them laughing in my ears. And today I'm gonna put the stream live because we are live on Twitch. We're gonna be bringing all things gaming to you. So, I mean, we have a lot of time. So do you, do you guys have any, do you have any questions? Do you have any questions you want to ask me? Your host, your first host for the evening, Ben Morrison. I myself am a diehard gamer. And a little bit later in the hour, first we're going to talk to Don Friesen. And then afterwards, I am going to give all you fine people a tour of my most beloved possession, my five terabytes of local storage games on my PlayStation 4 Pro, most of which I have beat. Well, maybe maybe half of which I've beat. A lot of, I, a lot of them I kind of just started and put down. A lot of free PSN games that I'm like, let's add it to the library. I actually don't really care about Trials Fusion, it turns out. I don't care about Trials Fusion, it turns out. I'm a single player guy. I know a lot of you guys on Twitch are big into Apex. You're big into Warzone. You're big into Fortnite. I like that too. I like to get lost in a good single player adventure. Give me some Nathan Drake. Give me some Geralt of Rivia. Give me some whatever the guy from Death Stranding is. <laughs> we all played, we played. Do we play Death Stranding? I beat, raise your hand if you beat Death Stranding. I did. That was a weird experience. And playing Death Stranding right now is very odd because it's a game about a guy delivering packages during an apocalyptic event where no one can leave their bunkers, which feels oddly similar to what's going on right now. I feel like I'm in Norman Reedus right now delivering like, what was it? Like juice? I delivered a lot of juice in that game. I have no idea. I put 60 hours into that game and I have no idea what I delivered, nor can I make sense of the three hour long <laughs> final video. I mean, come on. We, we all like playing the games from, from uh, why am I blanking on, uh, come on, refresh my memory. Kojima, I'm sorry, I failed everyone. I blanked on Kojima's name, but bless Death Stranding. What's that, Georgia? I said, bless you. You said Kojima. Oh, uh, Kojima, <laughs> Kojima Studios. But yes, I, I played, that's right. We're all waiting for the DLC where he actually gets transferred to FedEx and has to just, it's a lot of legal, it's a lot of, a lot of legal documentation delivering and it's another 60 hours of very weird gameplay, but I beat it. I beat the game. I beat the game. So hosts, what are you guys playing right now? Um, okay. So I am, like I said, I'm embarrassed to say that the thing I'm obsessed with right now is the Ashes, which is the cricket Xbox game. Really? I'm missing my family and just the sound of cricket me happy. It's not exactly what you'd call, you know, action packed, but um, it's making me happy. And cricket. then I'm playing Gris when I want to get emotional. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ben. What uh, what what games have made you cry? Gris makes me cry. Um, really? What? It's just beautiful. I don't know if you've played it, but it's a sort of narrative like she's depressed and as you go through with her, you are making her happier and filling her with joy and every time she gets color and it's just beautiful. So it becomes uh, extremely <laughs> lovely in its own little experience. Oh, lovely like like the three of us, our fair hosts <laughs> yes. for the evening. Exactly. I, I, am, I, am, I am proud to say, I know, I know Noah who's part of Laughter Hills Gaming, he was following very closely my progression through the Control DLC. And I'm proud to say I finally beat the Control DLC. Very, thank you, thank you very much. That's an odd game, Control must be played. We gotta get those sales up. Didn't sell as well as it should. We gotta get the sales <laughs> up for, for Days Gone. Days, Days Gone didn't sell as well as it's good. I beat those games, they're incredible. Days Gone should have done so much better. 
Yes. In my I'm kind of, during the pandemic, I'm taking time to play all of the post-apocalyptic games to remind myself that it's bad now, but it's not Last of Us bad. Yeah, I agree. You know, we're not quite there yet. Like, I definitely, I went to the grocery store today and I was definitely wearing a mask and gloves, but I was also not attacked by any clickers. So that has to be a win. I feel like that's a good <laughs> show right now. You know what's funny is that Last of Us Part Two was supposed to come out in a matter of weeks, but because of what's going on, it was delayed. And I just think the irony of a post-apocalyptic game getting delayed because of the real apocalypse is just, it's gaming into gaming. But we're not here that's to talk poetic. about that. Gaming we're here to talk about games. We're here to Straight talk about games. And for everyone that's watching, hit that donate button because all the proceeds are going to the Laughter Heals Gaming Foundation. It is a charity for us, the gamers. So please give liberally during the stream. So uh, I know our, our two hosts are, uh, uh, they're doing extracurricular activities. I know there is some baking going on. What, what, what is being baked today? So uh, I'm gonna get started soon. I just wanted to like be friendly and sociable to start. But right now we're all set up over here, ready to go. Uh, we're gonna make Italian cream puffs. Ooh, lordy. I know. And Reem, you're the only one that lives close enough to maybe get them later. That's true. I, Jordan and I live, what, like two blocks away from each other, but it's too dangerous to go outside right now. Pretty much. I'll throw so them at you. I mean, yeah, not I at, at your house. Leave them outside my door. That'd be nice. I was yeah, you just got to do the old, you got to do the drive-by cream puff. <laughs> just turn the lights, turn the lights down low, creep, roll the window down, and then fling cream puffs out the window and then ream catch You're them in your right. mouth and it's a game you're right because we can't uh tp houses anymore right because of the toilet paper shortage so cream puffs are all we have yeah it's a sad state of affairs mm -hmm. i agree um while georgia makes her cream puffs i'm going to be um decorating masks today i have a n95 mask it only cost me three thousand dollars and uh i'm just gonna be creating masks out of other like home goods and bandanas and like cereal boxes now i even have this <laughs> which I might share with later you know what to be honest like people in LA were weird before this it's not like this is the first time we've seen someone in public with this going on I've seen people in public with a lot less going on if you know what I'm saying You're absolutely right and you know what's weird is I had this laying on top of a box of Cheerios and it smells like Cheerios so I'm kind of intrigued really so you'll be you'll be avoiding coronavirus and it's part of a complete breakfast Absolutely. I wouldn't even call it a complete breakfast because I eat cereal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, college diet, what's up? And uh, yeah. <laughs> what's your favorite dinner cereal? You know, it might have to be Reese's Peanut Butter Puffs. That is, my Jewish mother would not allow that to happen. No, no neither would my Muslim mother, which is how our cultures come together at this yes, point. Neither would my Australian <laughs> mother. She would make us complete granola with no sugar. Yeah, well, I guess during quarantine, all bets are off. I'm eating chocolate for <laughs> breakfast. How you like that, Marianne? How you like this sugar? That's just sugar, isn't it? <laughs> yep, just sugar. All going in, one cup right now. Oh, wow. Yeah, I figured I'd start it. I'm doing the custard filling first. For anyone that's interested, I decided to do the custard filling because it needs to chill before I put it in the puff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you definitely got to chill before you go in that puff. That's Don't we know it? That's what they say about the puff. So I know, uh, Georgia, uh, I know our audience are gamers, and uh, you have been a part of a couple very gigantic games. If May I ask where we might hear your voice as we're, as we're twiddling away with our thumbs? Yes, while you're doing this, I am making some very... Oh, this is going to sound wrong. While you're doing this, I'm doing this. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. um, so Final Fantasy 13, I'm Vanille. That's where the uh, oh comes from. Did a lot of that. Wonderful. Wonderful. If I was sad, I did a lot of this. Uh, mm. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a deep emotional range. Um, and then, uh, so Final Fantasy 13, that was an amazing game to be part of, super honored. And then, of course, Final Fantasy 13, one, two, and three. And uh, Star Wars, The Old Republic, which was a huge moment for me because I'm a massive Star Wars fan. So mm -hmm. I actually canceled the trip to make sure I could do the recording sessions. I was oh, really? 
Oops. Yeah, because I was like, there's no way I'm missing this. Do not tell them I'm not available. Have you um, played um have you played the new Star Wars game from Respawn, Fallen Order? I haven't. Is it good? Beat it. Uh yes. It's <laughs> it's really Stop. good. It's I like say that, didn't you? It's basically it's like Dark Souls uh <laughs> had sex with Uncharted in a galaxy far, far away. Okay, no, that does sound most interesting. I'm not gonna it's lie. good. It's it's really, really good. EA finally got out of the way and let Respawn make an amazing single player game with no micro transactions. And uh, it was it's a really fun time. It is interesting because EA was involved heavily when we first started the Old Republic mm -hmm. and then it became Bioware like completely and it was so mm -hmm. much fun recording near the end. So that's an interesting fact. Um, what's your part of recording it? Well, favorite, oh, so probably early, like my first session, because I'm so obsessed with Star Wars, one of my lines was, if you think this is bad, you should see Hoth in the winter. And I was like, <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> and I got paid for it. I got paid to say Hoth. That's the thing. Um, <laughs> so that was, and then there was another line, which I thought was really amusing. And this is, I'm usually the PG person and I'm already going in there, but um, here we go. Uh, there was a line when the player marries me, because you can marry me, because um, that's fun. Uh, when- Why not? If you pay for it, why not? Exactly. I'm just saying, equal opportunity marriage here. And um, <laughs> so the player's about to marry me, and then he he or she, once again, equal opportunity, um, says, I love you, Enzin. And I say, I love you too. And no matter what comes, I will. I didn't read it like that at first. And I thought it was a fantastic guarantee. Be like, I love you too. And no matter what comes, I will. Um, <laughs> I'm just saying, um, once again, so rude. But yeah, that's that's that game. And then I'm in Payday 2. So I'm Sydney in Payday 2. And that fan base has just been exceptional. They have donated over $20,000 to my causes. So any of them that are watching, this is another one of your moments. Wow. Step up so it, it, it was a quite literal payday for you. To <laughs> that was good, Ben. I never, good. God damn it. Why didn't I think of that earlier? That's right. Really, huh? Hey, huh? you're the good guy. So, are yeah. you guys a, do you guys have a, are, v, are you guys VR people at all? Um, a little bit. The ring. I was gonna say a little bit. But I helped once uh, produce a live action short film in VR back in the day, which is really cool. Oh neat. Yeah. Oh yeah. Back dope. back when people were like, we're gonna shoot it in three hundred and sixty. It's gonna be amazing. Yeah. In ten years, everyone's gonna have a VR headset. Exactly. Yeah. Back in the day when they were like, we can replace roller coasters with VR machines, and you're like, yeah. I don't I have a PSVR and like, it's intimidating putting it on, man. Just because like, if you're gonna do games that involve a lot of motion, you have to be doing VR on a regular basis so you don't yeah. puke all over your headset because of motion sickness. Yeah. So like mm -hmm. when, I got the, when I got the PSVR, I got it with Skyrim and for a month and a half, literally all I did was live inside of Skyrim. And then I put the headset down and then I just saw it and I was like, I can't do that again. It's, it's too Dude, hard, it's like too much of a commitment. That's method gaming. Like, that is. <laughs> um, all right, I am being told it is time for our first celebrity comedian guest. So everyone out there in your homes, can't leave, make some noise for our first celebrity guest gaming interview right here on Laughter Heels Gaming. All proceeds going to the Laughter Heels Gaming Foundation. Donate if you're watching this. Help gamers out around the world. So please, ladies and gentlemen, a very wonderful quarantined Round of applause for our very first celebrity guest gamer comedian, Mr. Don Friesen. Clap it up, clap it up at home for Mr. Don Friesen. Here we go. All right, hey. Hey, there you are. Hey, How's your quarantine going, buddy? Oh, uh, it's all right, you know? You? Hanging out? Uh, I mean, no complaints. I mean, actually, like, tons of complaints, but, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. I'm, I'm holed up here. I got the PlayStation with the five terabytes of games, so yeah, you know, no, I got stuff to do. People, right now. So, Don, are you uh, are you are you gaming in your quarantine? Uh, you know, I'm. Uh, uh, I gotta pay more attention when I say yes to these things because I didn't know this. I don't. <laughs> I'm not really a gamer. I uh, board games like crazy. Um, hey, dude, it's called gonna... Laughter Hills Gaming, not Laughter Hills Video. Yeah, my, so, my what do you what are you board gaming? Uh, well, he's going to be transferring to Woodbury Designing Games as a really? junior in fall. Yeah, so he's really into it. But uh, he gets all, I mean, the games, 
he, you know, we play, none of them are simple. Um, we play Dominion. Um, Catan is probably the simplest game we play. Um, yeah, he just got one called Aeon's End. Uh, he got uh, uh, Seal Team Flix. Um, wow, there's a Seal Team board game? No, Flix. You flick. Uh, it's, uh, he's really into these massive um, Risk Legacy we've been playing. Uh, really? Yeah, we spend a couple hours every night. My son and my daughter and me, we just play games. And, you know, that's how we keep our sanity. You play, you play board games for a couple hours every night? Every Well, I'm, <laughs> what am I going to do? Yeah, that's good, yeah. You know, I mean, I'm talking to you right now. I'm on a beanbag in front of my TV. And if I wasn't talking yeah. to you, I'd be on a beanbag in front of my TV. <laughs> so af after playing hours and hours of board, do you find yourself getting better at board gaming? Yes, but not at the level, you know, he has gamer groups he goes to and, you know, uh -huh. um, so. Is he into, is he into like card and deck based games? Magic, deck -based, Pokemon? Yeah, yeah strat they're all strategy, deck based, everything. Not nothing's simple though. Everything's got like, you know, hours of instructions. You know what I feel really bad for is that uh, Magic the Gathering, you can't yeah. have any more than 10 people gather right now. So <laughs> it should be, it should be. Ma magic the sub 10 person gathering with six feet apart from each other magic the irresponsible spreading <laughs> magic the gathering of people yeah. who are negative and who are not spreading it around so you we've all been locked up for about a month now like yeah. so yeah. you find board gaming is helping you maintain your sanity what else do you do with your day um God, it seems like you know on one hand i feel like i'm just killing time between amazon deliveries but on the other hand <laughs> Uh, I am still doing stuff. I mean, right now I'm talking to you and I'm doing the laundry, so I'm multitasking. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I have learned to cook. I didn't, I didn't think I could cook and I'm cooking like crazy. Yeah. Spend what are you making? Four hours a day cooking. What are you cooking? I want to know. Well, I'm big into breakfast. I make this mean, uh, avocado toast with on the, on the what? toast and with You're aioli, scrambled eggs, tomatoes, aioli, garlic. Um, avocado, of course. Um, so you learned how to cook avocado? What's that? You said you learned how to cook avocado? I learned how to cook avocado, yeah. Okay. In fact, I'm going to write a one-man show about the pandemic. It's going to be called Avocado Toast, the movie. <laughs> the prices are only $29.99. Breakfast yeah, is kind of my bag, too. Uh, you know, so I'm I trying to sit here, so I'm lucky. You know, I live in a pretty, pretty nice place, and... Um, Lots of space, and it's like you know, you go out the back door, and it's it's woodsy. And I have oh yeah, we can see your your couch game is on point, and the screen <laughs> you have behind you, amaze yeah. balls. Yeah, I, amaze I, balls. I, I didn't want to you know show off, so I'm hiding all the good stuff. <laughs> like a is, that, is, is the screen blocking your Faberge egg collection? Back behind me, I don't want to get arrested. Yeah, no, it's you know you got to keep keep it copacetic. I'm yeah. a breakfast guy too. I'm trying to perfect the egg in the hole. You know what that is? You cut a hole in bread and you cook the egg in the hole on the bread. Is that a real thing? Yeah, oh yeah, it's egg in a hole. My mom used to make it for me when I was a kid, but I can't. I'm sometimes thinking. the egg sticks. Uh, crepes. I got into hey, crepes. Mommy, look what I'm doing right now. All right. Eggs. Did. Nice. Yeah, Georgia. Georgia, show us a little bit what you're doing. Okay, so right now I am I am separating the eggs like every good person should, and I'm doing that mm -hmm. smartly before I turn the heat on to start mixing things, because I figured I'm gonna do that, get distracted by you guys and then burn flour. So right now, separating my eggs from my custard for anyone that's baking along, because I know there's a few people actually baking along with me. What are you making? Uh, Italian cream puffs. I know, it was gonna be a Mississippi mud pie, and then I realized that each one of the five steps required three hours of fro freezing something, and I was like, this is not, I'm good at math. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. So I would say but I can't because I don't know where you live. If you want something delicious, I mean amazing, and you don't want to cheat, you know, and you're willing to cheat and not really make it. Uh, Trader Joe's has those almond croissants that you leave out overnight and they puff up and then you cook them for 20 minutes. They're, they're amazing. I mean, they're so good. I feel like every time I say I'm cooking, I'm just reheating things from Trader Joe's and like mixing them together. Like it's pre-cut, pre-cooked. 
pretty like separated and then I throw it together and I'm like, oh my God, I cooked Indian food tonight. Yeah. I mean, you might cook delicious things, but you're not really a cook if your 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 main tool is scissors. Yeah. <laughs> I, see. I had a whole I had a whole old bit about Trader Joe's where I don't I don't think they should be allowed to call themselves Trader Joe's unless they plan on trading. I brought in some good stuff. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny. It's it's hard making a joke on Zoom because you're like <laughs> joke, and then you're like, are they gonna laugh? Okay. Just blame laugh. it on the lag, dude. I found that. Blame it on the lag. No, it's it's hard to know. Like it's hard to know if uh, you know, it's, are we still calling Saturday Saturday, or is it like day five since my last shopping trip? Right? Like, yeah. I have no idea. This is what I you know is it? Are you really day drinking if you don't know what day it is? That's funny. Yeah, my my calendar app called me crying. It wanted to know what it did. <laughs> I'm still no, getting all my calendar notifications. Like I didn't really want to turn them off just in case we go back to normal life, but that's becoming really weird. Cause I'm like, no, I'm not going to that right now. Oh, I'm not going to that either. Oh, this is sad. Yeah. I, I Have you guys I over my, uh, I saw my luggage just sitting there, my empty luggage in, in, the, in the closet. And it just looks so sad. Yeah. <laughs> Use me, Have, take me with you. Even to the store. Have you guys, uh, Have you guys found on your calendar events that you didn't want to go to, that you're like, all right, thank you, Corona. Oh, you Don't have to go to that birthday party thing now. ever. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I everything I had to do, I was like, oh no. Like even my comedy shows, I was like, oh, work is canceled. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah. And then Reem, you are you are mask making right now. Am I correct? Yeah. So I have. Look, someone gave me an N95 mask, so I'm gonna decorate that a little bit later. But right now, I'm trying to figure out how to make masks. So I'm using like cloth, and I just used a couple of, like safety pins. So you can see that. Mm -hmm. I'm just trying to like make all the alternative masks I can make, and maybe decorate them, and then maybe give them away to someone who's watching. So if you guys want to win a mask? Yeah. Not just, just a mask. Ring. A mask made by Reem. Have you guys? Wait, have you guys found that? When you're out and about, you have mask envy. I can't wait until like Cosmopolitan. I'm sorry, I think Georgia was speaking. No, 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 you go Oh, I can't wait until like Cosmopolitan like has an article that's like, what does your mask shape say about you? Can't. Or Cosmo would be like, Cosmo would be like, 10 ways to please your man from six feet away. <laughs> Cosmo, socially distance that dick, Cosmopolitan. Exactly. What do Speaking you think? Of socially, okay. I have like a blank canvas mask right here. What do you think I should uh -huh. draw on? Nice. Uh, a smile. Okay, Georgia, yeah. we're not trying to be basic here. I'm just kidding. If you like a smile, we can do a smile. Oh, yo, you should do like a vampire mask. You know? So a vampire smile? Is that what we're doing? We're combining the two ideas? I like yeah, that. Yeah, do a, a Dracula mask. A Dracula okay. mask. Vampire smile. Got it. All right. Don't yeah, I don't, I don't. Where do you usually travel that you're traveling so much? Oh God, uh, I don't know. I mean, I just, I, it was a really, yeah. It was a really tough time. I've been spending the last few weeks just literally unbooking the last three months. I mean, it's, uh, I was supposed to be, where was I supposed to be this week? I was supposed to be in uh, North Carolina at a theater this week. And also at a festival in Missouri and then Next week, I was going to be in the Bay Area. And then a uh, week after that, I was going to be in Ventura. So oh, yeah. it's all, uh, all the places I was going to be. So we'll see. And are you, have you had enough quality time with your family at this part, at this point? You'd be ready to yeah, not be cooped know, up I with them? Thought, oh, I've gone too much. And, you know, but how about a little balance here? I mean, this is not, uh, <laughs> this is not the way to do it. But no, I'm, you know, like I said, I'm really, I, I know people are, uh, I know a lot of people are stuck, you know, alone. And I know a lot of people are stuck with people they don't care for so much, or at least not after a few days. <laughs> so I have, uh, I have both my kids here and uh, I, you know, we've really gotten along well. It's just like, I just, I miss uh, making people laugh and I miss the money. So, and, and not worrying about death, not, not looking at a death counter every few hours, you know. Speaking of money, because I'm a good host, I'm here to remind everyone to click that donate button and give money liberally to the Laughter Heals Gaming Foundation. It's money that goes to help the cause of gamers. So please, 
You got nothing better to do. You got that stimulus check burning a hole in your pocket. Why don't you take some of that cash and give it to who needs it? The people watching right here on Twitch, the gamers. Do it for the gamers. Click that donate button for the Laughable Heaters Gaming Foundation. That's pretty good, right? Yeah. Huh? That's pretty good. I'm using an old iPad and I, I can't tell if the camera's all blown out. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. Um, I am motivated. Oh yeah, hashtag professional host. <laughs> I'm getting a message from. So when you guys think, when are we gonna be, uh, I don't know, I'm trying to figure out, like, cause everyone's asking me and I don't know when we're gonna be doing live gigs. When does freedom kick back in? <laughs> yeah, well, when will people I mean, show up for freedom? Touring. You know? I know. Right? I was supposed to have like a huge college tour and that got canceled, but I did a Zoom college show yesterday. So I did an hour of comedy on Zoom. Nice. And I had I had to force everybody to unmute their microphones. I was like, I need to hear your laughter. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> or this oh, is yeah, me you... talking to myself for the camera. I, I have to ask too. So I'm gonna do um I've only done a few minutes here and there. I've kind of kept pretty sparse, but um I'm going to be doing an hour in about two weeks uh, through Flappers. And, uh, yep, I'm doing that tomorrow. To, yeah, promote it to all my nationwide people because you know they don't have to be here. Obviously, I just mm -hmm. figured that out. But um, I can see that done. With an hour exhausting. I mean, I, I feel like ten minutes feels like an hour and a half sometimes in front of the screen. You know what? I thought it was going to be a lot more exhausting than it was. Um, yeah. The cool thing is, if you have new material like Corona material, you can yeah, have yeah. your set up right underneath your phone and just like yeah. read it like a teleprompter yeah that's cool yeah so that part was cool um you know what it was a little long but once you get into it it's like you get back into it you forget what's okay. happening it's the yeah, first you, time. Uh, probably longer is better because you get over all the weird stuff and you just like settle in huh yeah exactly okay i think probably the expectations are a little lower because it's not like you're on stage at a theater you're like yeah. doing comedy from your living room so yeah. you know yeah that's how I marketed it. I said, low expectation comedy, please attend. Were you standing when you did it? I was. I was standing, but I had like a fake virtual Zoom background. So it looked like I was in a comedy club, but I wasn't. So that felt good. I gotta figure wow. out how to use this format. You know, how to really, um, I wanna do like uh, maybe some sketches and characters and yeah, just, uh, and use, hey, use the, the screen. screen behind me for different things. You know, there's a whole lot I've just, I'm just now getting into it, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing the Flappers Hour tomorrow night. Have fun. So I'm trying to figure out what, uh, what the best way to play that one is. But again, I've done, I've done a couple comedy shows, and as long as you can hear laughter, that's kind of the one thing we really need is the, is the sound of laughter. And there is a little bit of a delay, but you just do a bit, you hear the laughter, you're like, oh. And then once you kind of settle into it, you're like, okay, this is what I do. And the best thing about comedy is that we can fit comedy into any situation, any scenario. You know, just get me somebody who can hear me, let me hear their laughter, and we'll take it from there. And that's yeah. why, you know, that's why laughter heals gaming when it comes down to it. <laughs> hey. So, 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 Don, what's, uh, what's, on, what's on the docket? What's on the board game docket tonight? Oh, uh, I have a feeling my daughter is going to be pushing for another game of Risk Legacy. Um, but tell us about Risk Legacy. Is that is that well, different okay. than the game of Risk that we all know? It, yeah, it's like the game of Risk. Only um, this is all new to me. I, I didn't know. Have you heard of? Do you know Legacy Games? Mm -mm. Okay, so let me think of the easiest way I can describe it. Um, there's special rules with each game. Uh, so you get to add cities to certain places. You, you basically adapt the board and the world as you go. And it's permanent as long as you own that game. So right now, um, Africa is worth four instead of three. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, there's, there's, it's hard, there's different criteria, but as you go along, there's, there's different things you add to each space and they stay permanent um my son won a game and he got to increase um uh indonesia uh australia whatever that that whole little planet down there in the left hand corner right hand corner mm -hmm. it's worth four if he holds it but three for everybody else and this is like throughout the world so every game goes on and you get to rename continents and you can certain spaces are uh are harder to defend or they're they're easier to defend depending on uh -huh. 
it's all permanent and it adds up. Um, so it, it becomes this whole like adaptive world. So we're only like five games in. By the time you get to 15 games, it's like, it's like just, just last game, uh, first person to add 30 armies at once, you, you break open a card and you do that thing. And the thing was that um, my daughter got to create alien island. And she got a bunch of alien forces added to her forces. And really? Now there's a bridge between um, Indonesia and North America. So oh. good luck defending North America now. Um, that's perfect. Change the whole game. We're aligned with the Sharpie, and now there's yeah an island in between those two. Yeah. So it's it's really interesting, but it it's, takes a lot. You know, I mean, these games are like two and a half. How hours. long? How yeah. long is the average two and a half hour game I length say, really? I would say we've done some in a little over two and some, the long ones took three, three and a half. Do you guys ever do any of the more traditional games, your monopolies, your lives? You know, um, no, not anymore. <laughs> we used to, that's used to be all we did. <laughs> and, uh, now my son, uh, yeah, got us. A, I, can you still hear me? Can yeah. I sound, okay, sorry. Um, let me check my audio. Sorry, this is. Hmm. Um, Reen, that looks amazing. Do you think, should I add a nose to it? What do you think? Oh, that's great. Yeah. I think I you like need it. a nose, because there's no nose on you. All right, I'm going to do it while I'm wearing it. Oh my god, that's huh. good. <laughs> All right, yeah, Reen, make some noise so we can see you draw a nose on your face. There we go. <laughs> okay, there you go. All right, all right, let's go. I don't know if this is working. I feel like I'm doing Sharpie cocaine. Can you guys hear me? Okay. All right. All right. Here we go. Should I draw the bridge of the nose too? Why not? I okay. think. Why hold back? You said no or yes? Yes. <laughs> Wait, isn't this a little ironic that vampires were bit by bats and bats are what caused this whole thing? Isn't that funny? Yeah. Um, Okay, let's do that. Let's just... Don, what sort of mask have you been wearing? Or are you not going out into the world? Uh, you know, I, I'm just, I just have a real basic, um, I have a real basic uh, hand, handkerchief and then I'll put uh, underneath it, I put like a, I took a, the air conditioning, I read this on my, the, the air conditioning filter. And I cut out a filter mask and put it underneath that when I go out to the store. Yeah, I've heard that works. Coffee filters too. Yep. Yeah. Throw that in the old bandana. Yeah. All right, Don. It has been a pleasure yeah. hanging with you yeah. on the Laughter Heels Gaming live streamathon. Thank you very much for being our first guest on tonight's streamathon. Absolutely. You did it. Uh, we learned. And you know what I liked about talking to you is that I think a lot of the the discussion is going to be centered around video games, but it's all about gaming. And yeah. you brought a lot of enlightenment to me about the world of board games, which I actually now want to investigate more. That seems oh, like a really fun oh. way to interact with people that you're all quarantined up with. Yeah. So uh, we want to say thank you from the Laughter Heels Foundation. Is there anything you would like to plug before you go? Just uh, a week for, well, the May 1st, I guess the Friday. Uh, I'm getting eight o'clock, I'm going to do an hour. Flappers, um, you can get tickets online, and uh, hopefully it'll be a grand old time. It's going to be a grand old time. The Classic comedy of Don Friesen. material and some surprise, uh, really new, new material. Yes, quarantine edition. So thank you so much, Don. You've been amazing, and thank you for helping thank us for kick off the Laughter Heels Gaming Foundation telethon, yeah. Zoomathon, yeah. whatever we call it. Thank you so much, Don. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Don. Bye. -bye. Bye. Guys, All right. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. What color should my tongue be? I have green, I have blue, I have pink and yellow. And orange. I mean, this is a vampire we're talking about. What kind of tongue would a vampire have? I just feel like I don't have red and I feel like you're bullying me because of it. So if we could choose another color Whoa. for which I have been. Whoa. Uh, be... Or silver. Does that feel like a vampire tongue? Silver tongue. Definitely silver tongue. Thank you. And for everyone watching at home, 
uh, a little info on what the Laughter Heals Foundation is. Laughter Heals is a nonprofit, 501c3, that is uh, raising money for a number of different causes. But in this case, it is Laughter Heals Gaming, which is raising money for uh, gamers struggling with mental health issues and other mental illnesses. So when you hit that donate button, as you should, liberally donate money to the Laughter Heals Foundation, you are helping to fight mental illness and help uh, develop a support uh, system for all of the gamers out there, just like you and just like me. And I, you know what? We can all use a little mental health, health right now. Um, so I think what we're gonna do, uh, what we're gonna do is, before we have our next guest on, I am going to take you on a tour of my PlayStation library. I wanna do this for a long time. Our next guest for everyone watching is the very, very talented Alonzo Bowden, uh, who's just a national headliner. You also know him from Last Comic Standing. And he's just a phenomenal comedian. So before we have him on, I am gonna take this time to swap this camera around and bring you through my PlayStation library, all five terabytes of games. I know you like it. I know you want it. And hosts, if you want to add, I want to weigh in on any of my, my titles, by all means. So the first thing I do when I categorize my games is we're going to talk about the categories of games that I've broken them down into. Because I have about 150 games on here, and we got to figure out which category is with. So the first one, of course, is my personal favorite genre, open world. Next up, we have adventure. Next up, we have just the Sony ones that come with the system. Then, of course, we have the VR titles. Then we have the sports titles. Then we have 2D, for those of us who are fans of our classic 2D side-scrollers. Then we have FPS shooter games, where you have your Apexes, your Call of Duties, your Fortnites. Then we have the action games, if you just want a quick burst of action. And then, of course, we have our indie games. So we'll start on the left side, open world. This is, of course, my favorite genre. Uh, and we'll start over at the top, Shadow of the Colossus. Brilliant game. Brilliant game with the worst camera controls I have ever seen. I have never uh, wanted to rage quit a game so much because of the camera controls. It's a 3D game, but the camera is always trying to orient itself behind you. So if you're trying to look around a corner, you can only do it for a second before the camera spins itself around and it's really annoying, which sucks because the game is absolutely beautiful. This is from, of course, Blue Point Studios who did the remasters of Uncharted 1, 2, and 3. Then of course we have Red Dead Redemption 2, needs no introduction. Uh, perhaps one of the best stories in all of gaming easily the most alive open world. You know Red Dead, don't gonna tell you, but in the words of Dutch, I have a plan. Then of course we have Mobile Spider-Man. This game is straight fun in a box. This is one of the games that I'll throw on just as just a web swing around New York City. It never gets old. I haven't played the DLC yet. I might actually, I might actually play the DLC. That game's fun as hell. AC Origins, this is the first in their reboot of the Assassin's Creed game. I like AC Origins a lot. I always liked Ancient Greece. The setting's really good. Bayek, helping to track down the murder of his young son. Good game, wasn't as long as Odyssey, which we'll get into later. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, next up we have The Division. This is of course The Division 1, which is before The Division 2, which people are playing actively. I never really got into The Division, but it's kind of fun to walk around post-apocalypse New York. Not as fun as current New York right now, so let's not talk about that. Then we have Batman Arkham Knight, the game with the combat, the open world, the Gotham, the beat em up style. Can't go wrong with Batman Arkham Knight. Phenomenal game. Metal Gear 5, I, you know, I am, I'm sad to admit that I have not really dug into Metal Gear Phantom Pain. I might, because I am intrigued by Kojima. I just really never played any of the Metal Gear games, and it seems a little weird to drop in on the fifth Metal Gear game. Mad Max, this is another one of those underrated titles. This is basically a launch title for the PS4. And I think people didn't take it seriously because it, it kind of launched right when Mad Max Fury Road did. And a lot of times like branded titles just are not good. But Mad Max is really worth a look. It's an open world Mad Max game, a lot of car customization, a lot of combat. It's very much worth a look, very much worth your time. Mass Effect Andromeda. Oh, what do we say about Mass Effect Andromeda? What can we say about Mass Effect Andromeda? Bioware, what happened? Andromeda? No. No, it's not good. It's really not good. It's bad. <laughs> Mafia 3. Haven't really played too much Mafia 3. Uh, wasn't a big fan of the Mafia games. This is one of the ones I'll just crack open and check out. AC Odyssey. Oh, I have a lot of thoughts on AC Odyssey. I have maybe 80 hours in this game. I've played through the main storyline. 
And honestly, open world games are just relaxing. It's a fun game to just go and tool around Greece because you're tooling around the actual Greek islands, plus tons of murder. Tons of murder. Murder. Uh, how, murder. However, the AC games, and especially this one, really need to learn how to rein the freaking story in. The story is all over the place, and it's way too long. If they could shave 20 hours off the story, this would be a perfect game. However, very much worth your time because the game setting is incredible. Uh, and then Near Automata. This is one of the weirdest games I've ever played. This is a meditation on life and death. You play as a cyborg who's intelligent in a post-apocalyptic world. But with this game, you have to play through it six times. You have to play through the game six times to get the full story. Very worth a look, though. A lot more philosophical than you could imagine. Ellie Duckle, thank you for the $18 don donation. Let's clap it up for Ellie Duckle and the $18 <laughs> donation. Thank you. I'm wearing uh, my mask for Alex. There you go. Thank you. And then here, of course, is Death Stranding, post-apocalyptic Amazon Prime delivery simulator. Fucking play at your own risk. It's Death Stranding. It's beautiful. It's weird. It's Kojima. Outer Worlds. Awesome game. Awesome game from Obsidian. Uh, this one's really worth a playthrough if you are a fan of the early Fallout games, Obsidian created Fallout. Uh, and of course, their, their, their swan song in the Fallout is they created Fallout New Vegas. And The Outer Worlds is very much kind of a New Vegas type game set in space. It even has the same like chat camera. Uh, and if you're a fan of gaming documentaries on YouTube, Noclip, who does really phenomenal crowdfunded video game documentaries, is doing a six part series on the making of The Outer Worlds right now. Uh, this game is a lot of fun. If you like combat, first person combat, very heavy story driven uh, game narrative and just kind of fun, you know, like sci-fi space comedy. Days Gone, Deacon St. John, my man Deacon St. John, play Days Gone. I think it might be on sale right now in the PlayStation store as part of their spring sale for $20. And if you have not played Days Gone, you go get this game right now. Did not get enough love and it's maybe one of the most beautiful open worlds I've ever seen. It's a truly American video game. It's made by Bend Studios. Uh, the game was actually made in Bend, Oregon. It's set in rural Oregon. It's very gritty. It's balls to the wall. It's very metal. GTA 5, you know what GTA 5 is. You all have it. I don't need to say anything. Just Cause 3, Michael Bay Simulator. A lot of wacky fun. Fun to hop in, blow some stuff up, zip line around. Horizon Zero Dawn, beautiful game. Beautiful game. If you haven't played Horizon, you got to play Horizon. Some of the most satisfying combat in any game I've ever played. Fighting robot dinosaurs never gets old. Wait, All right, in the final if game. Me one hundred thousand just asks if he can donate for he or she can donate for a custom mask, and I think so. So yes. um, donate if you want, and I will design a custom mask for you. If you can see what I'm doing right now, I have all these cool like like little, I don't know what these are called, like metal pieces and I'm customizing this N95 super mask. So you guys want to donate to win one of these, you know how to do it. Worth about a million uh, dollars too. Donate away. And Alonzo, we're about to bring Alonzo on, but I want this is the final game I want to talk about is my favorite game of all time. The one and only Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. I have 300 hours in this game. It is, in my mind, the greatest game that's ever been made. And I know gamers say that, but there's a reason for it. It is the definition of masterpiece. And if you have not played The Witcher, you're doing yourself a grave disservice. And, oh, I think it's on sale right now in the spring sale for like $15 for the complete edition. So just get it. Get it right now. And now, here we are. And we're back. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I am very excited to bring our next guests on. Uh, I have watched this man's comedy for a very long time. You have all seen him on Last Comic Standing. He tours nationally, he's a headliner, he's a crusher, he's a gamer. Please, let's give a big virtual quarantine Twitch round of applause for the very one, the very only, Mr. Alonzo Bowden. Hello. <laughs> what Welcome is up, stream. Ben, and, and people out there? Yeah. Uh, you're about to hear a very loud noise. See, I'm trying to actually turn on my PlayStation for the first time in nine years. I don't even know. I, uh, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm the worst what do you, what person do you got? to what have do you got? here. As I am a non-gamer. Are you wearing a mask in your own house? She's Is that what I see? Mask. 
No, I'm decorating. I'm I'm customizing oh, my map. I was gonna say, wow, you are you're good. So yes, yeah, so I'm sitting here. Um, I have to tell you who I am as I see you sitting there, and I, I'm sorry I can't see all the names. Ethan, you're sitting there in a in a racing chair, which I admire. Yeah. I have a PS3. I don't know if you can see this. My controller still has a cord. All right. This is the world. <laughs> This is the world I'm living in. I, I just never, I didn't get into gaming because I was so afraid of the addiction. I, I had friends who were self quarantining long before there was a virus because they got hooked on gaming. So <laughs> I didn't, I never got into it that deep. Uh, so ask away, Ben, and I will give you the wrong answer to anything you want. Oh yeah, I mean, the one thing I can say about being afraid of the gaming addiction is don't fight it, man. Some addictions are worth it, and gaming is one of them. <laughs> I'm sure it is. I mean, you guys are going to inspire me to get this thing working again and actually do it. I'm actually checking out my – I'm running MotoGP on my screen right now. All I'm right. Big, big MotoGP and Formula One fan, so maybe I can get into racing on this thing and, and actually do some. I, I do have to tell you, okay, you have Adam – Adam Ferrara coming up next. Yep, he's up next. And me and Adam were talking because I just did his podcast. So he, he told me I have to tell my gaming story so that he's not the worst gamer on this show. <laughs> when I got this PlayStation, I picked up Assassin's Creed. It was a hot yes. game. They Which told one? Me, you got to play Assassin's Creed. Here it is right there. I was is that ready. AC3? Uh, Assassin's Creed 3? I don't even know what number. No, it's Assassin's Creed Zero. You know how old they, this thing has been? <laughs> it's the it's the original Creed. Uh, who's bothering me? Sorry, people are calling me while I'm trying to work here. Hear that? Anyway, Assassin's Creed supposed to be a badass game. I'm gonna walk through the castle, killing everybody. My uh -huh. assassin walked into a corner, and I could not make him turn around. He just <laughs> stood there in the corner, bouncing into the wall repeatedly repeatedly and and that was the end of my assassin's creed career <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of hard to hard assassinate to when you can't leave the corner exactly exactly no that's I, what i've I, always said yeah i love the culture right and the the love gamers have of doing it and i know now it's like you get deep into stories and i will tell you this on the other side I've gotten voiceover gigs on games. Which ones? I can't tell. I can't ah. tell. No, honestly, what, have you ever done this, Ben? Have you done any of these? Yeah. You have yeah, to yeah. sign an NDA when you get the gig because they record it so far in advance of the mm -hmm. game release that you have to sign. And, and I haven't been a major character. I wish I could sit here and tell you that I've been like a star of a game. I've <laughs> done like some of the monsters that's mainly what I've done. Monsters uh -huh. that attack and get killed. And I've been an occasional villain, but not a big role, you know, just a few uh -huh. lines and stuff. But it's really fun. But no, I, I honestly can't say because every one of these, because they, they say they produce it so far in advance yeah. that you can't talk about, you know, what you're, what you're doing. Are there any older games that are currently out, no NDA, that you know of that you can? Talk no, about that you've been no, in? I, I honestly can't. Because some of them, well, listen, when I do the monsters, I'm basically just growling and, yeah. and yelling uh -huh. and being killed. So yeah. I'm not exactly sure which game <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was for, you know. Uh -huh. But it's fun. And I like your... Uh, it's cool work. Are you I'm using sorry. a virtual background? Are you using like a virtual background? Because it's all white behind you. It kind of looks like... No, that's the wall, Ben. That live is. from heaven. That is the actual wall in my room behind me recording. Okay, I like it. and see, it's, this is what happens. Dramatic. You're a gamer, and you uh -huh. think everything's virtual. And a real <laughs> wall, see, Ben? A real wall threw you off. You're like, whoa, that's cool. What a background. Exist. I need to develop one of those. You it have them all around your home, Ben. <laughs> you want to get your mind blown right now? I am actually doing this from my car. This is a whole, this is a virtual... There's a virtual room right now. I mean, it's all virtual, but the entire, my whole life is virtual. I'm online. So, Alonzo, how has your quarantine been? How you how, how, how you hold up for this last month? You know, not too bad. Um, other than, and I was telling a friend today, 
this is the longest I've gone without being at an airport or on an airplane mm -hmm. in 20 years. That's, mm -hmm. that's been, that's like something I don't think about, but it's kind of strange. Um, the, the lack of performing, like not getting on stage. I mean, I've done a couple of the sh live stream shows, but it's yeah. really not the same as being in a club. So that part is weird. I'm fortunate that it's not like a survival thing or whatever, you know what I mean? Like I haven't had any of those problems. I'm healthy, I, the house mm -hmm. is stocked. Um, mm -hmm. I get out on my motorcycle, it's the ultimate social distancing and oh, yeah. and it's good for sanity, you know? So- There must be some, uh, some high quality motorcycling with nothing to hit on the road with you. Well, I'm going to tell you, man, the, the, and I don't know where your other uh, people are, but you, I know you're an LA person, so you know mm -hmm. this. We're all the in LA. You're all in LA? Okay, so yeah. the freeways have gotten crazy because yeah. people are driving. I'm doing 85 and people are passing me like I'm standing still. Like uh -huh. it, it, it's crazy out there, you know, as far as it's like, okay, people, the road's open. We can drive a little faster, but you're, you are not, equipped to be doing 120 in that Camry. Oh yeah, no, it's, 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 it's once the apocalypse happens, it's the Autobahn. I wanna take a quick break and thank uh, some of our donors. I wanna thank Crash Power for donating $50 and it's me, 10,000 for a $25 donation. Of course, all the money goes to the Laughter Heals Foundation, raising money to support uh, gamers who are in need of help in the world of mental illness and support. So thank you everybody uh, who is watching and thank you for your donations. Everyone who's watching currently, hit that donate button and all the money goes to the Laughter Heals Foundation. In this case, it's going to us gamers. Now we're gonna go back to talking about how these roads are insane. I have been reading that cops, like, you know, there's not traffic, but they're seeing all these pileups of cars because people are taking the opportunity to really see what their BMW can do on the 101 with no other automobiles on the road. Like you gotta watch out if you're driving on the freeways now. Yeah, yeah, the speeds people are driving. And it's funny because, you know, I'm a gearhead and um, I've driven on racetracks. I've done some high performance schools, cars and motorcycles. Really? I, yeah, I wouldn't consider myself an expert, but I'm a good driver and I can handle a bike. But the speeds people are going at, it's crazy on the street because you never know what's going to happen right so you're yeah you're doing 110 and next thing you know you're running up on a car who's doing 65 and people don't realize how dangerous that is you know and someone changes lanes i've seen two major pileups i don't know if anybody got hurt or what the result was you know i where you pass the aftermath of the damage but the damage to those vehicles tells me there was some high speed stuff going on. And and I've seen the cops out there and I think the cops like when they, if they catch you, I think they're nailing you. And uh, just for those listening, <laughs> ask me how I know this, but 35 miles an hour or more above the speed limit is reckless driving. And that ticket can be really expensive. Really? Yeah, yeah. And you don't know this, in per you don't know this in personal experience, of course. <laughs> no, I'll tell you the story. I actually, I got lucky it was a cool cop. So I got caught doing a hundred, uh, well, a hundred <laughs> plus on, on a public road. What? And the cop said, I'm going to give you a break. I'm going to write you down for 85 because uh -huh. that's 30 over the speed limit. He said at 35 over the speed limit, now you move into reckless driving, which is a, uh -huh. a different, different category. So yeah, so you, you don't want to be... No, you've also said that you, you are a gearhead and you've been on racetracks before. So what, what is actually, what is the physically fastest you have gone in a vehicle? Um, an indicated 160 miles an hour, which was wow. probably about 150 because your speed speedometer wow. in your car tends to be a bit optimistic. And I've Why done that. that is? I'm sorry? Why do you think it's optimistic? It just I don't know. I don't know why, but they work that way. So if you were to look at your GPS, if you had a GPS, and even if you're doing like 70 miles an hour, look at your speed speedometer and your GPS, and you'll see two different speeds. And the GPS really? is the actual speed. So okay. um, oh really? Yeah, huh. I, I've done that on a I've done that on a bike, and I think the fastest I've done in a car. And this was an actual speed. 
I think it was about 148, which there's a place called Speed Vegas. It is phenomenal. It's, it's a mile, a couple of miles off the strip. They have all kinds of exotic cars, Ferraris, Porsches, Lamborghinis, whatever. And you go there and you pay to do laps in the car. And they, they have a driving instructor in there with you. And you uh -huh. do laps. And it's not a complicated, it's not a difficult track. And it has like a mile front straight that you can just go for it to see how fast you can go. So I think I did like a buck 48 there. And that's a great way. Like if you want to do it, that's a great way to do it and have fun. What does 150 miles, give or take, feel like when you're going that fast? Here's the thing about going fast. You have to look way ahead. So instead, uh -huh. you're not looking over the hood. You're looking down at the next turn you're going into. Because anything right in front of you, you've already passed, uh -huh. if that makes sense. You know, <laughs> the world, like I had this motorcycle. It's called the Suzuki Hayabusa. <laughs> And for a long time, it was the fastest, quickest and fastest motorcycle in the world. And um, not that I was, you know, pro on it, but again, I did all right. And I used to say, when you open, when you go full throttle on a Busa, you're not accelerating. The world is rushing towards you. It's just, <laughs> it's a whole different, it's a whole different vibe. But you, um, yeah, and, and I got to talk to a professional racer uh, a guy named Ben Spees. So if you ever play MotoGP, look uh -huh. for Ben Spees. He's great. He was a great champ, world champion in World Superbike. And we were talking about this and, and they were saying, you know, Ben, you do 180 miles an hour on a motorcycle. What's that like? He's like, well, I do it every day. So it's not that, you know what I mean? Like to him, yeah. that's normal. 180 to 200 miles an hour. Just like when we get on stage, right? Yeah. We walk in front of a group of 100, 200, 500 people you've never seen before. And like, okay, make them laugh. Do you uh -huh. know how scary that would be to the average <laughs> individual? You yeah. Know? So, so, I mean, it's what they do. But, yeah, I've been fortunate enough to go that fast. And um, little things make a difference. A little movement is a big movement at high speed. So My, uh, my cousin is a big, big gearhead as well. He's raced uh, stock cars. He's raced rally cars. He just grew up. His dad, his dad was a big uh, race car driver. Builds engines, takes them apart the whole nine. And he, he has an Xbox, and he got the full gaming rig set up. Yeah. With the force feedback wheel and the pedals. And he built a custom desk. The TV is right in front of his face. And uh, we played, I don't know what game it was, maybe Forza. But anyway, he played the game on the most realistic settings where you know it's going to handle just like a real car handles and I'm yeah. I'm I'm a pretty I'm pretty good at video games but I got on there I got on there crazy confident that I was going to tear this track up and I just plowed into a wall immediately and with actual physics intact I did not know how to handle a car that would accelerate to that degree yeah one thing they're doing now the simulators and the, basically what your advanced games are just like driving and they even mm -hmm. took some experts from the video game world and put them in real cars. And the only thing that threw them off was the sound and the heat. Right? Really? The heat? Because, yeah. Interesting. It's very hot in a race car. I mean, there's no air conditioning, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it's very loud and it's physical. And that was the part that threw them off. But they actually proved to be really good drivers. Uh, the ones who, again, like your, your mm -hmm. friend you're talking about, who have the full setup and make it real. And um, the guy I was talking about Ben Spees, the first time he went to Europe, cause he was like an American champion, he had to go to Europe. Mm -hmm. He said he learned all the tracks on video games because really? the video games are so realistic as far as the, the geography of the track that he said, that's how he learned it. So when he went there, he huh. knew that, you know, turn one was a, was a left-hander, turn two was a sweeping right-hander and all of that uh -huh. stuff. He learned all of that. Yeah, yeah. Gaming at that level is is like driving. Mm -hmm. Now yeah. you just need somebody to turn up the heat in your house. And <laughs> just, you put on headphones and they blast noise into it, and then you'll really feel the experience. <laughs> yeah, if you're, if you're doing dirt tracks, you can have your roommate stand next to you and just scream the next turn at you, and then it'll yeah. be just like real life. Have and you, have you seen track, Ford versus Ford Ferrari? At you. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, I have my I have my own date, uh, my own dirt, just for for realistic <laughs> racing in home. Have you seen Ford versus Ferrari? Yes, excellent movie. That was great. Oh, that's that's some dad porn right there, man. Yeah, that that's you know the, in that world. I don't know if you ever like. Uh, ch do you check out uh, Formula One on on Netflix? I forget the name of the series. They did a series. They have a series about Formula One. It's really fascinating to me. What what I love about racing like that, and you saw it in Ford versus Ferrari, hundreds of a second make a difference. You know, yeah. that's what blows my mind. So so you could actually sneeze and lose. <laughs> Like you, you know, <laughs> oh man, you wasted time sneezing. We're racing here. You know, that, that, part that blows my mind when you're talking about over the course of a, you know, two hour race, tenths of a second make a difference. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, if you've gone 150 miles an hour in a car and maybe faster on a bike, you understand that when you're going that fast, the world happens to you. And you know what? You know what? Before we bring on the next comic, I'm gonna I'm gonna say, Alonzo, you gotta you gotta break out that PS3, crack open that Moto GP, and remind yourself how much fun virtual yeah, games. You know, can I'm telling be. you, I have it on right now, and I think my my I think my my control is charging here. I got oh, yeah, four red lights. What does four red lights mean, experts? Tell me. Does that mean I'm ready to go, or am I waiting? Really? Uh, well, four red good. lights. What? You're totally ready to go, Linda. She's cooking dinner and she's better at gaming than me right now. <laughs> the woman, one woman's decorating a mask, the other one's <laughs> cooking dinner, and they're both like, yeah, we're still better than you. While <laughs> we're doing this, we could beat you yes. at any game on the console. <laughs> we're just letting you guys have yep. your fun while we wait together. So with that female empowerment note, I am going to say a gigantic thank you to the very, the very wonderful Mr. Alonzo Bowden. Thank you so much for joining us on the Laughter Heels Gaming Foundation Streamathon. Uh, I am a huge fan of your comedy, as I'm sure most of our viewers are. Uh, before you go, sir, is there anything you would like to plug? Tell them where to go to find more of your comedy. You can, you can find everything I'm doing at Alonzo Bowden or Zo Funny on Instagram. Like I say, I'm doing it all. I'm doing Zooms, I'm doing Instagram Lives, I'm doing live mm -hmm. streams, which is great. And, and listen, Laughter Heels, the gaming, the, yes, please give some money. People are out here. There's so many people out here hustling and struggling right now that if you got a little extra, you know, pay it forward and, and try to help somebody out. And the other thing I want to say, Ben, and you, this has probably come up with you, we'll be back. You know, <laughs> people, people say, like, is comedy going to come back? Is this going to come? I believe we'll come back. It's going to take some time. I don't know yeah. when, but we'll be back. But in the meantime, let's help each other. Okay, and and keep laughing, keep gaming. If you want to laugh, just figure out. And I know you, computer expert, can do it. Actually, log into my game and watch how poorly I play, and you'll feel <laughs> better about yourself. So I'm here for you. You heard it here. <laughs> the, the the confidence boost we all needed by watching Alonzo stream. And I'm GP staying on, on for PS3. Adam. He's my guy. Yeah, yeah. Adam, Adam, Adam's a phenomenal comic as well, and he's coming up right now. So let's give a big virtual. Round of applause, a big thank you very much. Thank you, Alonzo, for being a thank part you, of Laughter Heels Foundation Peloton. We will see you back on stage very shortly. Absolutely. Thank you again, sir. Thanks. Thank you again, sir. All right, so that that is the wonderful Alonzo Bowden. We got more comedy, we got more gaming coming your way. People here who are watching at home. And I just wanted to say one more time about the Laughter Heels Foundation. We are here raising money for the Laughter, Laughter Heels Foundation. All of your donations and hit that donate button and please give liberally. All of the donations, you are going to be giving money towards the cause of raising money to help gamers deal with the struggles of mental illness out in the world today. It's tough out there. Please give liberally. All the money goes to our nonprofit. It's for a good cause. And it goes to buy Alonzo a PlayStation 4. So uh, <laughs> with, uh, with that having been said, I think we are ready for our next guest. Uh, you know, can I, can, I get a, can I get a virtual yes? Because what's that? So that means we've got Adam coming up next. Is he ready to go? Yep. Oh, amazing. Um, I don't know. Uh, Rim, do you want to intro? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. Um, go for it, George. Adam Ferrara is our next guest. As we've been talking about, it was like everybody else wants to hang out to watch him. I'm excited to meet him. Um, you guys might recognize him from Top Gear. 
the show that we've just been referencing because it's all about cars. Um, he also, by the way, was on uh, Nurse Jackie. So if you're not so much a um, car person, perhaps like me, you might have seen him in Nurse Jackie. Uh, so guys, let's welcome him into the stream. Uh, is he there? Adam, are you there? Can you hear us from the other side of your screen? Oh, okay. All right, well, we'll wait for Adam. This is a look at my map, guys. I don't know if you can see it. The oh, computer's yeah. on there. That's Very awesome. Real. Waiting room. In the middle, in the middle is this nice, like, clock. Can you use All right, right there. This is, like, the coolest N95 mask that has ever been. It's very steampunk. And uh, if you donate pretty hefty, we might give it away to you. Who knows? Oh, there he is. Hey, Adam, talking about gears. There you are. Hello. Hey, welcome to our stream for Lofty Hills Gaming. Cool. Thanks for having me. How you do? What are we making for dinner? Uh, well, actually, I'm making Italian cream pops. So don't eat it for dinner. I know it's quarantine time. Right. So and I am decorating an N95 mask in the steampunk. This is honestly, this is stuff I have left over from Burning Man. Right. And that got spilled <laughs> this year. So uh, here we are. You know what I have left over from Burning Man? Regret and a tattoo removal coupon that I have to cash in. There you go. I would have regret too, but I don't remember it. So I think we're in the same boat. That's the best way to get rid of regret. Mm-hmm. It's hey, amnesia. Did Burning Man not happen this year? Is that? They just canceled it. Oh. They just canceled it. I know. I'm so upset. It's supposed to be like uh, Memorial Labor Day weekend, and mm -hmm. it's done. Adam, then what are you going to post on your Facebook for the rest of the year? For the rest of the, for the rest of the, I don't know, I'll, I'll come up with something for the rest of the year. But that, that's the thing is that we got, we got to keep pumping out content because it's all we can do. It's like, it, it's, you know, I, I think my wife and my dog are planning a coup. I really do. Cause I'm driving them crazy. <laughs> what are they giving? Where are they going? Well, I, I, I don't know, but I, I know they're teaming up. They're like, he's still here. Cause you know, <laughs> you know, comics every Thursday, their ass goes to the airplane, you know, cause that's when we fly out on the road. Yeah. So what are you going to stay saying then, Adam? What's what's on the list of how to not kill each other during quarantine? Basically, what I'm doing is uh, I'm just pumping out my podcast. Uh, it's called the Adam Farrar Podcast. 30 minutes, you'll never get back. Uh, nah. This week, we got on uh, Steve Sharippa um, from The Sopranos and Blue Bloods, and he's starting a new podcast with Michael Imperoli called Talking Sopranos, so he stopped by. Uh, Edie Falco's been also been on the on the podcast, Jay Leno, Adam Carolla. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so I've been, I've been doing that and I go out for my Armageddon walk around sunset just to get out of the house and yeah, cause you gotta get out of the house. I got it. Like I have ADD and I think it, it, it just, it, I've had it my whole life. So oh. it's like, I, I gotta, I gotta keep moving. I can't stop. I can't, I can't just stir, make Italian cream puffs and feel, feel, feel set. <laughs> God bless you. Now what? I, uh, I've been getting bored of my walks on Sunset. I live right by Sunset, too. So mm -hmm. um, bored of walks. I just bought rollerblades on Amazon today. So when they arrive in 2021, I'm going to start using them. <laughs> Can you, roll up, you go up, you go up uh, by Rock and Roll Ralph's. You go up to Runyon Canyon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I live yeah, like yeah. right by Chateau. So I go all the way to Rock and Roll Ralph's and then back. Oh, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But what I love you? giving yourself a backyard, background of like a New York. Oh, yeah. No, I'm not on the stoop. This is just... Hey, you, want see, you want to see what this is? This is actually, and I don't, I don't know if you can see it, if I can get, this is Abbey Road Studios. This is the exterior of Abbey Road Studios. Oh, see that? Oh, cool. Yeah, I basic. think you trying to match your accent with your background. I wasn't clear. <laughs> yeah. No, I, uh, uh, I, I made this, this little studio in my garage for the podcast, and I'm a Beatles fan, so I had the exterior of Abbey Road Studio, and then the camera was too far away to get the whole shot in, so I had to make a choice. So it looks like I'm sitting on the stoop somewhere. That's so cool. It's like welcome to my neighborhood. Yeah. Adam, so we Adam, is there anything that you've like learned during like quarantine or anything that any new skill you've acquired? Uh, you would think I would acquire patience. I'm still waiting for that to show up. <laughs> I, I I will tell you this: it, it, going out and doing stuff is is I I noticed the energy of going out to get because we were always going out to get, and now that I'm home and I can't leave, I'm looking around at what I have, and. My, yeah. wife, my wife is stunning. My wife is just, I mean, she's, you, you're going to Google her after this and you're going to go, wow, this guy's batting over his head. And you're right. <laughs> but she's, but she's, she's just, uh, she's just patient. And I see how she deals with me now on a regular basis. I just don't come in 
go to a set or go out on the road and come back. I'm like, oh, wow. Listen, she's listening to me. She's considering my feelings. And I'm just screaming and yelling like a, like a madman. So I think you're just doing this so they don't do the coup after all. You're like, no, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. I'm trying to appease the masses so they, so they don't kill me in my sleep. <laughs> what does your day look like? like walk me through a, a day in your quarantine life. I get up. I'm the first one up in the house. I get up. I go downstairs. I make coffee. My mom's back in New York. So I call my mom in New York. I say, hi, Ma, I love you. I put her on speaker as the coffee's being made. And, and after I say, I love you, you okay? That's pretty much the end of my participation in the conversation. <laughs> she, she, she talks about what she made for dinner last night, what she's defrosting for tonight's dinner, and who's dead. So that's Has she learned how to use Zoom yet, or is that too far out? No, are you kidding? My mother, okay. I had to buy my mother a fire stick so she could watch The Outlander. It's like, <laughs> what do I do, what button? I'm on a show now called uh, Why Women Kill on CBS All Access. Yeah. So that's like, you know, my mom, what channel? Ma, it's not on the channel. What do I got? What the friggin' stream? What is the, it's, ladies, it's easy to just to get the actors to go to my mother's house and act the shit out because <laughs> she's not going to get it. There you go. So, and I don't have the patience. My mother, my mother talks to my wife and they discuss how much patience I don't have. And my mother and, and my wife, talks her through stuff because she has that kind of patience and sends stuff to the house for her. And so I, 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 yeah. All right. So, okay. If you had to give yourself something now, set yourself a goal mm -hmm. for a new self, what are you going to do? If there's a month left, what can you do in a month? What can I do in a month for what? And what's, what's the goal? Something I want to accomplish, something I want to accomplish, a new skill you want to acquire, whatever it is, a new video. I, I, you want increase my patience. There you go. That's it. I will. Cause I go from zero to homicide in three seconds. So how do we gauge that? How do we measure you increasing your patience? I think it's the, it, it's the distance between the spikes of yelling. <laughs> there you go. That's it. Yeah. We just got to get you a stopwatch and that's it. Yeah. But I do get to go out. That's the, the thing that helps me is when I go out and I come back, I'm in a better mood because I've been out. I got some air. I go out and do the essential shopping. So I got the gloves. I got the mask. I go out and you wait online to get into the, the supermarket. Um, yeah. and, and, once you, and, and there's not a lot of stuff there. It, it's, like, it, it, it's like a Vons in Havana. You know, this hundred percent. You see where the stuff should be. Yeah. Adam, I have to ask. Mm. You're quarantine. Are you video gaming? Here's the thing. Well, when someone asked me, would you would you help game? I said, I'll help, but don't ask me any gaming questions. I mean, the last game I, I did was for I was on a show called Top Gear, which was a car show, and Forza gave us um Forza gave us uh, the new game because it coincided with the track we were on up in San Francisco. And I had to play the game, and Tanner Faust is a race car driver, was driving a Lexus LFA on the track. So I was racing in the game with the other uh, host on the show, my pal Rutledge Wood, and the real race car driver was in a real car. We had to see who would win. I broke the game. No. I did. I broke the game. The, uh, the engineers were there, the guys that designed and coded the game. I flipped the car over in some turn, and the guys were looking at the screen like, it's, it's not supposed to do that. I, you broke it. You, you broke it. It doesn't, that's not in the code. I don't know how that happened. So, you know, I'm a guy. So right away, my ego kicked in and I just went, you know what? Why don't you guys come back when you get your shit together? All right. <laughs> that's good. Real quick, I just want to thank Julie Mama uh, for her message. Thank you so much. Um, and it looks like, is that the $5 donation we got? Mm-hmm. We just got a $5 donation. That's for you, Adam. Thank that's you, Adam. Me. Five bucks, Julie Mama. I want there it There you all. go. I want it all in singles, baby. So Adam, tell me, are you one of these people who like washes all their groceries when you're done? Like when you get home, do you dis disinfect? When no. you get an Amazon package? Oh, you don't care. Do. Uh, no, I have a wife. So basically when I bring it to the door, my job is done. <laughs> I stand there I st and I, she, she disinfects me. I stand there and it's like, it's like I'm being deloused. I stand there with my arms out like Jesus and she <laughs> sprays me down. And there, there I am. Forgive them, Father. They know not what they do. So she, <laughs> she sprays me. Then she sprays the bags. Then I, I don't bring them in the house. After she sprays me, I go, I take off the shoes. I got to go upstairs. And she read an article that the sunlight will kill, uh, will kill the uh, bacteria or any virus thing on your clothing. So we have a clothesline outside my bedroom, like I'm back in New York in an hour. So I'm, I'm taking my clothes off on the roof, grateful that the trees have covered so the neighbors can't see it. Because I'll be yeah. honest. I'll be honest with you, ladies. From the waist up, I'm not impressed at all. So I put the I put the clothes over the clothesline. Then I got to go and take a shower. And while I do that, she disinfects all the groceries and stuff. And that's our pattern. Do you 
do you find it interesting that like this thing came from bats and sunlight is what kills the germs? Like it sounds kind of vampirish, don't you think? Yeah, I, I guess, you know, I look, I, they, I thought it was aardvark. First they thought it was bats and they go, no, we were wrong, it's aardvark. And I was like, oh, Who that's- Who has an aardvark better. these days? Who has a aardvark? Who are you, Morticia Adams? Gomez, we're having bat for dinner. What are you kidding me? <laughs> That's going too far. Yeah, I mean, look, you're not going to put aardvark in 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 your pastries, are you? No, you don't have aardvark soup. Are you kidding? Oh my god, is that all? Is that all? Oh wow, you're putting them in a. I gained six pounds looking at that. Are you kidding me? That's the pastry. It's going in. God, the food is terrible. Ta- right, here's the thing with the food. Uh, first of all, it's getting out of hand. In my, I just put mayonnaise on an aspirin yesterday. That's how oh much. Oh my I'm god. Putting <laughs> I have I have OCD, so I keep going to the refrigerator and I open up the refrigerator. I don't have to eat anything, but it's just it's it's part of my little pattern when I run around the house. Nice. So yeah, so I'm eating way too much. Well, at least we live in a world where sweatpants are just called pants now. You know. Yeah, I, yeah, I take off my morning pajamas. Yeah, exactly. I go from pajama one to pajama two, and then I'm like, mm, if I feel sexy, I put some lipstick on, which is where we are right now. There you go. I'm pretty sure that smell in the house is me. <laughs> Where, now, now, yeah. where are you guys? You guys, you're by Rock and Roll Rouse. And, yeah. I'm and, pretty close to there, too. So okay, we're so do, do you get out to walk? Are you guys going out and walking? Or? Well, I'm out on the balcony every night, every day in the morning. Mm-hmm. And then I'm bike riding to the store when I have to go. But now I have to quarantine because I've got tested. So now I can't go anywhere. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just thing. I mean, I don't know. I kind of went walking for a little bit. And then did all the runners. I have a problem with the runners. who are like, no matter like, <sighs> Like in your face, like breathe. They say that if a runner can project like 27 feet, like into their path, as opposed oh, to the girl. Yeah. So I got, I, I'm right by the beach in Santa Monica. So I, they run all over the place. And I got a problem with the guys with no shirts on because I'm like, really? I know you're in shape. Stop it. You're not <laughs> so, that hot. I've seen girls whose masks are bigger than their crop tops. I'm like, you are so lucky that you can't catch this through your belly button. Like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. Put on a shirt. What are you doing? <laughs> Yeah. No, Adam, okay, so this is a gaming stream and you said that this is not, did you ever like, were you into gaming when you were younger or is this? Yeah, it was gaming when I was when I was a kid, but when I, when I was a kid, the, the, the Game Boys were, were really hot, the little Game Boys, so it was the, the portable yeah. Game Boys and stuff. And, and then I discovered girls, so. <laughs> okay, so before we got to girls, what did you play on the Game Boy? Uh, the football game uh, and Ella and, and um, um, uh, what was the oh the uh, uh the, the Intel football was a big one in my house. I play a lot of football games. Breakout was big. Um, Asteroids. We used to look when I was a kid. You had to go to you had to go to an arcade. You know, you kids today pumping <laughs> stuff into your house, making pastries, quarantining. <laughs> a pastry. Yeah. Well, I mean, you can get weed delivered to your house now. All right, it, it takes them an hour to find your address, but you still can. <laughs> you know what? I have to stop to say, God bless America. Continue. Yeah. But when I was a kid, you had to go to some weirdo's basement and make believe you were friends for a half hour. <laughs> and you always had to, it was always a basement apartment, the weed deal. You, and you could never go in through the house because the guy was like part of the family, but not really. You know, they had the same fathers, but the mothers don't get along. So just go down. Don't say anything about his eye. There was always yeah. a warning. Yeah. Don't say anything about the eye. Don't look him in the eye. But like, if he asks, touch the eye. Only yeah, if you ask. Yeah, listen, and, and you got to listen. To, oh, he's gonna he's gonna want to play Emerson Lake and Palmer. You got to listen to side two of that album before. I'm like, so I got to sit there. And there was always a reptile that needed to be fed, so he's dangling like a mouse over a snake cage. I said, Can I just it's humanitarian? It's a natural product. Yeah. Now you just walk right in, man. You got they got they they have sommeliers here at weed stores. Like, good evening. I will be your bud tender. <laughs> it's a very earthy note. I can, yeah. Yeah. Mm, I can taste it. Yep. Yes. yes, we have many strains. Do you want to think? Do you want to sleep? Or are you hungry? That's so funny. Yeah, so you can do that now. And then that was a. Uh... You're open now. It's an essential, apparently. They are open. You know what? Thank Dude, God. So I'm from Colorado originally. And in Colorado, they forgot to label dispensaries as essential businesses. Mm-hmm. And people lost their minds. Like within, yeah. I think, like three hours, they had to reclassify it as essential. Did they? Uh, yeah, yeah, they did. Because people were like lining up for hours, like trying to stock up on weed before it closed. So they're like, yeah, mm-hmm. never mind. All right, it's essential. Yeah, okay. And then in Massachusetts, they had to shut down their dispensaries 
because people from the surrounding states started like crowding in, trying to get their weed in as well. And it was breaking all the social distancing rules. So Massachusetts shut down all their dispensaries because of that. Oh God. Okay. Nuts. Yeah, I my mother, I sent my mother to CDB cream and I got a sponsor on my podcast. The CBD companies are sponsoring my podcast, so they sent her stuff to the house. And uh, nice. you know, with the arthritis and the gummies and stuff, and you know, she takes them all. She goes, I, it, it's helping. I just keep keep it coming. <laughs> okay, ma. I can't remember anything before breakfast, but it helps. Yeah, I have. It helps with the feet. My mom's got the feet, the arthritis okay. in the feet. My mother. Okay. She's oh, she's out on Long Island in one of those fifty five and over communities with the guard. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay, though. What? Is everyone okay and safe and healthy? Yeah, the guard is older than she is, so I. The guard's a 92-year-old guy with a bow tie. I'm like, ma, how secure do you feel knowing that the Oval Redenbacher dude has the left flank? <laughs> That's great. Yeah, but she's out, she's out there. I call her every morning. And, you know, you just check in. But here's the same. Here's, here's what I get. Is you get up, you're like, oh, I got to do something. There's an urgency to get stuff done. I've never felt more busy, and I feel like I'm getting nothing done. Right? Oh, my God, the same thing. Every day by 3 o'clock, I'm like, hang on, what? Yeah. How, how have I not done all I wrote down, and yet I've been doing. Look, not only I got the li look, look at the list. I got highlights. I highlight the list. I still oh, haven't. Wow. Done. I still haven't done. All right, guys. I think I'm officially done with this mask. Let me see. Look at that. Well, oh, it's a Top Gear themed mask for you, Adam. Thank yep. you. And on that note, Adam, is there anything you want to tell our uh, viewers, friends out there to pay attention to you? Things going on that you're going to be doing wearing different pants next week. So. Yes, first of all, the best to everyone. Watch the best to you and your family. Stay safe. We're all in this together. So if you got it, wash it. Um, mm -hmm. If you guys, uh, uh, the Adam for our podcast is wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, a lot of great guests this week is Steve Sharifer. I also did a three part series on meditation. If things are getting a little nuts for you, uh, you can go check that out. And if you're Top Gear fans, there's a podcast called Speedy Beardy and the Mole, which is me, Rutledge Wood. Uh, and Tanner Faust, and uh, we, that's up there as well. So everybody, please stay safe. Uh, good luck with the sphinges. That's what the Italians call what you're making, the Zeppelis and the sphinges. Oh, nice. Well, thank you. See, I didn't know that. And, yeah. that, and a lovely mask. Look at that. Thank you. thank you so much. All right, be good. Thank you so much for joining Thanks, us. Thanks, Adam. Be good, kids. Bye. And now, guys, don't forget, we are still raising money for gamers who are going through mental health challenges. There's so many of us out there, and I know how it can be. So please uh, don't forget to donate up there. Press that button and contribute. We aren't just making this for nothing, guys. Um, Reem, what's next on the, the mask while I turn my oven on? Well, just to give everybody a recap. I uh, just completed this mask with the gears. Uh, again, these were Burning Man pieces that I haven't used. Since Burning Man was canceled, I figured one up. And then I also have this homemade mask made of cloth and rubber bands and safety pins. Put that on right here. Uh, look at that. It's Dracula themed. Screw that. Oh, look at that. Oh, oh wow. Oh, wait, let's just. There we go. And uh, we're back. And we're back. Up next, I'm thinking. I don't know. I was thinking of maybe making a cardboard mask. So I have this box of uh, Eggo cereal. Um, yes, cereal is what I eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I'm just, I think maybe I could do something with it. So that might be next. I also have some tissue paper. Um, I have my- I thought you said tissue paper. And I was like- Tissue paper? That, don't waste that just yet. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll figure it out. And then I also have this like spray glue. I'm not sure how to use, but I can use it. I think uh, for the spray glue, if you just get really bored during quarantine, just get a good sniff and you'll That's wake up when all this is over. That's it. That's <laughs> Oof, Lord, okay. Okay. Don't actually do that. That, that, that was a joke. I burned myself a couple times. So I'm oh, the glue gun. <laughs> Ladies yeah. love the glue gun. Yeah. Uh, Jordan, how are your pastries coming along? Well, okay, so I must confess that making pastries while talking to a group of people, while like I've never made this before, and this is actually not that easy. So I, I don't know whether I piped in more than I can twirl. But right now, that's I got one of one of them going, and I've got six on here. 
So we made the custard, and these are my little pastries. Mm. Oh, nice. We're going to get cooked in a little bit here. And okay. then we'll get with cream. So we'll see how we're going. Yeah, it's going to point out a live stream to make these pastries for the first time ever. That's yeah. the risk. Yeah. I want to show all the gamers out there my t-shirt because I think you'll be able to appreciate it. It is a t-shirt made of all the original NES cartridge hits. We got Duck Hunt, we got Castlevania, we got Punch-Out, Donkey Kong, and at the bottom, if you can see here, we have the only cartridge in color is the original Legend of Zelda, and my original NES nerds will know that the original Legend of Zelda shipped with a gold cartridge, and that's how <laughs> you knew that's how you could always tell if your parents love you come Christmas time is if you got that that gold Zelda cartridge. Now, did you, Ben? Let's be honest. No. Oh, no. <laughs> Do either of you guys have a Switch? Have you played Breath of the Wild? Haven't played it. Oh. Man, what are you doing? Breath of the Wild's a masterpiece. I beat that game, too. What am I doing? Memes. Is that a one-word answer? Memes? You're memeing it? You're memeing it up? I'm memeing, I'm making memes, I'm watching memes, I'm crying from memes, I'm tiger memeing, yeah. whatever, you know. <clears throat> yeah, this whole situation has been real good for Instagram. I'm, oh. I'm almost convinced that Corona came from Instagram because, man, Instagram's oh. blowing up. You don't think it was the 5G conspiracy? Uh, I think that conspiracy is complete bull, yes. personally. <laughs> but we need to get into that. Especially what we need to get into is the Laughter Heals Foundation. We're here oh. for Laughter Heals Gaming. So hit that donate button, all you friends watching on Twitch. And I'm seeing we've already gotten over 2,000 views on Twitch. Good for you. Donate that money to give money to support mental health initiatives for gamers with the Laughter Heals Foundation. So give that money right now. And Georgia, I think you're holding a bag of dough. Am I, am I right about that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm making Because I, I was pausing because I wanted to share that we're at $98 in donations. And I think we could definitely uh, do... It's just keep us going over at least that hundred for the next someone can someone can do that oh we got more than that we got more than that and our next comic who it will be calling in shortly is one of my, one of my very good friends in comedy i have spent a lot of time hanging out with this man is the very funny the one and only mr bruce jingles he will be joining us shortly he is not here currently so that having been said i think we take the time to do another flash review of Ben's gaming library. What do you guys think about Woo! that? We've covered open world. Yeah. Let's flip this around and uh, talk about another genre in my library. Let's get that camera back there. Once again, Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. What are you doing? Play it, love it, learn it. You're wasting your time if you've never played The Witcher 3. Also, the Netflix show was better than it deserved to be. Henry Cavill, he's my man crush. Now we're going to the adventure category, the adventure game. A lot of games in this category. It's a big category. So we'll go Control. By the way, I just beat it. Noah from Laughter Heels. I beat that DLC, baby. I beat that DLC. Control is a trippy game. It's really fun and incredible telekinetic combat. Next up, we have a Plague Tale Innocence. I haven't actually started this game. I bought it so I could play it with my girlfriend, but I've tried to get her to start playing it with me a number of times. So far, she has not said yes, but eventually I will get her to say yes and play this game because I've heard it tugs at your heartstrings. Conan Exiles, this is the multiplayer Conan game. I haven't really played this one. It was a free PSN game. I will crack it open eventually. Hitman, what can I say about Hitman? You're bald, you have a gun, justice is being dispatched. Hitman is a great game. Soma, also a very cool game. Puzzle-based, very trippy sci-fi game, worth a look. The Yakuza games, I haven't really, this is Yakuza Kiwami. I haven't really cracked this one open, but I really am intrigued by the Yakuza games. Uh, there are like 9 million Yakuza games and they keep, they release like two new ones every year. Apparently, they're very, very good. I will play that one. Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I, I must admit, I was a little too hard on Shadow of the Tomb Raider when I first got it because I was a big fan of the first two Tomb Raider games, the first reboot game and then Rise, uh, which I still feel is the best of the game. And I got Shadow and, you know, it was just more Tomb Raider and I kind of discounted it. But, you know, I had beaten all my games. I cracked open Shadow again. And it's, it's pretty solid, man. It's pretty solid. It's got Laura. It's got jungles. It's got tombs. Play it. Love it. Learn it. <clears throat> Next, we have The Order, 1886, another one of these gems that didn't get enough love. It was a launch title for the PlayStation. Uh, the story campaign is a little shorter than people wanted, but it's got design for days. Uh, next up, we have, actually, this is the Uncharted collection. This is the remaster of Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 that Blue Point Games did. 
And if you haven't played the Uncharted <laughs> games, what are you doing? Uncharted 2 is, is about as big of a masterpiece as you're going to get. And PlayStation has announced that their Play at Home initiative, Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection, is free right now. And I think it's going to stay free. They've just decided to give these games away so people have stuff to play while in quarantine. And the Uncharted collection is free. So anyone who's watching on Twitch right now who has a PlayStation, who has not played the Uncharted games, go to the PlayStation Network right now and download it because you get Uncharted 1, 2, and 3, and it is F-R-E-E -E for you right now. Here, next up, we have Assassin's Creed Unity. Uh, this game, maybe one of the most controversial games in the Assassin's Creed line. It's absolutely beautiful. I think it tried to do too much technically. Riddled with bugs when it launched. Riddled with bugs, which was a big deterrent for a lot of people. But it's a beautiful game, and it really, it, it shot for the stars. <clears throat> Dragon Age Inquisition. Played a little bit of this. I'm a big RPG fan. This one's pretty good. It's exactly what you'd think of an RPG. Dragons and stuff. And that's that. Tron Run. This is a great runner game. Like a, you know, kind of like a free run game, dodging obstacles. Super fun to put on at parties. It's great to watch your friends wipe out. A lot of fun. Uncharted The Lost Legacy. A lot of people may not realize that they made another game, another Uncharted game after Uncharted 4, and it's starring Chloe, and it's really fun. It's more Uncharted. It's, it's girl power to the max. You're solving mysteries and raiding tombs, you and the ladies, and it's a super fun game. Plus, there's an appearance by Nathan Drake's brother, Samuel Drake, voiced by the very, the very talented Mr. Troy Baker, who's about as big of a superstar as I get in video games as possible. Deus Ex, Mankind Divided. If you guys are waiting for Cyberpunk, I know it got pushed back, and you want to get your Cyberpunk fix and get yourself some Deus Ex Mankind Divided, maybe one of the games that really pioneered the first person science fiction adventure genre. You got mods, you got Bionetics, it's Deus Ex. Batman the Telltale series, haven't played it. Not a huge fan of the Telltale games. I did play The Wolf Among Us, part one, and I think I may have cracked open The Walking Dead. I'm not quite sure. Will I play this? Not quite sure. Hellblade, Senua's Sacrifice. People love this game. It's from Ninja Theory? Is it from Ninja Theory? Am I getting that wrong? I hope I'm not getting that wrong. I don't, it might not be from Ninja Theory. People in the chat, who made Hellblade? Is it Ninja Theory? I might be wrong. Anyway, it's a beautiful game. It's a girl who's dealing with psychosis. I've gotten maybe 10% of the way through. If there's any game that I need to revisit in my library and play through, it's probably this one. Oh, yeah. Tom underscore says, I love Send You a Sacrifice. All right, I'm probably going to have to play it. This is one of those games that I've heard about for so long that I'm probably doing myself a disservice by not actually diving into. Next up, we have Heavy Rain. These are, the, of course, the genre of movies as games. The most recent game in the genre is by the same studio, Detroit Become Human, which is a total trip. Really, actually, very worth playing. And these games are really good if you want to play a game with someone who's not a gamer because you're really just moving through a cinematic story and you can hand them the controller. And it's basically just hit X if you want to punch the dude, hit square if you want to go in the corner so they can deal with it. Here's another one, Beyond Two Souls, same studio, narrative, dark. Clearly I'm 0% of the way through, haven't played it. God of War. What can we say about God of War? Tilt the camera down, I am being told. All right, fine. Fine, there you go. Camera is tilted down. I think so much so God of War, was that Georgia? Somebody's been clever. Georgia's not going to tilt her camera down. Oh, Georgia, tilt your camera down. <laughs> I tilted my camera down on the PlayStation, and I was like, do they really want to see my trophies? No. It turns out, Georgia, they wanted to see your trophies. You're not going to do it. We're here for the gamers. We're here for the gamers. I want us to focus on Reem for a second. This amazing mask she's making. Oh, thank she's you so making. much. I'm gonna have to cover the mouth in a second though. So, but I am, I'll take requests on how you want me to decorate this, so. And um, uh, chubby little boink boy asks, are we all friends in real life? And I am, I am proud to announce the answer is actually yes. Yeah. Georgia, Reem and myself all know each other through the Los Angeles stand-up scene. And long mm -hmm. before we were ever hosting the Laughter Heels Gaming Streamathon, we were doing comedy together as friends. So how do you like that, chubby little boink boy? We actually knew each other before this. Now back to God of War. Has there ever been a game that is more perfect than God of War? Few games I would say are perfect, and God of War is a perfect game. Okay, Outlast 2, that's great. That's hilarious. Bruce Jingles is here. All right, let's turn this camera around. Sit back down. We'll get back to my library in a second. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my true pleasure. 
on the Laughter Hills Gaming Streamathon to introduce a man that I have known for a very long time in comedy, a man that has never hesitated to ask me for my guest bait. The very funny, the very lovely, the very wonderful, big virtual round of applause for the incomparable comedy stylings of the one and only Mr. Bruce Jingles in the stream. Oh no, Bruce, we want to see you. Bruce, turn your camera on, baby. Turn your camera. It's my favorite song. Came out during quarantine. Are you guys like, every time I go on Zoom, I'm just like reminded of how round my face is getting. Does anybody else feel that? What? Totally. Hell, thank you. Thank you, for you got saying. a great face. Thank you. But I just feel like I used to have cheekbones and now my face shape is just thumb. You know? Just Bruce, the, great. Bruce totally. Under you're too hard on yourself. Yeah, I used to be an index finger and here we are. <laughs> yeah, I have been, I have been, uh, Working very hard on getting rid of my quarantine 15. Have you guys had that? Oh, yeah. Oh. So real. Not trying to brag, but it's real. <laughs> What's funny is I actually, I came into the quarantine with the 15. You know what I'm saying? Like, right when this popped off, I was already in, a, in like a place of like, I don't care if I look good at all. And then quarantine happened. I was like, oh, this has just got much harder. Yeah, hey, there he is. Hey, they're talking about this. Hey Bruce, how's your 15? Bruce Jingles, are you there? Say hi. Hey Bruce. Connect that audio, Bruce. Honestly, I never made pasta until quarantine. It's my first time making pasta. That'll do. And now I've done it like 45 times. So here we now are. When you say when you say making pasta, did you have you like made it from scratch or getting and Sorry. boiling? Boiling pasta. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> Oops. Um, while we get Bruce's audio, um, I'm getting tissue paper because so I made the mask shape and Bruce, can uh, you hear us? Can you hear us, Bruce? Still waiting for his audio. We'll all wait for that. So I made the mask shape, which is what every peeping wow. Tom would love. And then I'm gonna get this tissue paper and cover the orifices. Oh you just said orifices. That's a word. He, yep. Bruce, can you hear us? Bruce's IT support just came in. I saw that. I feel, now, I, now I hear you. Yay! There we go. There's Bruce Jingles. What's up, baby? Jesus. How you doing, man? Sorry, <laughs> man. Th th these are corona, uh, corona days, dude. These are broke times. I'm coming on free, uh, yeah. Radio free Jingles. <laughs> radio Jingles. How's your quarantine been, man? Shitty. Sucking really? Great. Not good? Dude, it... The only good thing about it is you get to clean up shit you did you didn't want to clean up. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. And what, traffic. Like, what? What is your house clean? Are you doing a lot of cleaning? Yeah. Yeah. Getting rid of old shit. I like like my roommate, which is my mom, that uh, doesn't get rid <laughs> of shit, which which explains why I'm here. Uh, the other thing is, uh, you know, you, you shouldn't have coupons for shit they don't make anymore. <laughs> like what? <laughs> <laughs> like like Shasta. Like Shasta. <laughs> and what is she and what is she doing with that bag over here? It looks like a broke clansman. Oh, I'm making that <laughs> this is a DIY mask. I'm just trying to figure out how thick the tissue paper can be if I to like let me breathe. You know, like I'm oh. right now with two flies. I think I might have to do one fly instead. Oh, I was scared. I mean, it yeah. could be whatever you yeah, want it to be. Let's be real. Not okay. any sort of I was thinking, damn, it must be rough. The coronavirus is fucking up the plan. Like, they're using <laughs> <my> bags. <laughs> so, Bruce, so Bruce, are you a gamer? You gaming? Uh, I'm starting to. Now, because of this, I'm, I'm doing a lot of shit I didn't do before. Like, what, what are you playing? Uh, most, mostly the Marvel games, like Marvel vs. Capcom. Uh, oh, the classics. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm old school. Uh, I, I played uh -huh. Pure Pool. That, uh, the pool game they had. I, I dig that. I, I that remember money. back in the arcade game days, some of our audience might be a little too young to remember what it was like going to an arcade game and putting that quarter 
on the dash while oh, you dude. try to try to take on the ninja next to you who's just gonna you're yeah. just taking quarters left and right <laughs> oh man i got doubles you know which meant yeah. white people which meant uh i'll play <laughs> a game so we can play a one a two player uh, <laughs> i come from the Everyone's... days of dragon's lair i don't know if any of you kids remember oh, yeah days. Dragon's yeah. Lair was a it was a groundbreaking full motion video game that took advantage of a laser disc. And it's Dragon Dragon's Lair still holds up. It was a yeah. fully animated game. I think that was animated by Don Bluth, who did yes, All Dogs was. Go to Heaven. Very good. Was that was that Don Bluth Studio? Yes, it was. The man who made a, the secret of the, the secret of Nim. Yep. Yep. Those the, the, those Don Bluth movies are trippy. If you want to throw them on, like throw on tri so throw on Secret of Nim. Even All Dogs Go to Heaven. Oh, that. There is some very adult content in those kids' movies. Hundred percent. Wait, have you watched a Pixar movie lately? It's all like adult content. Well, did you guys see Onward? No, I retract my statement because I haven't seen the latest Pixar movie. <laughs> <laughs> How was Onward? It's good. Yeah, it's good. I think you know. I think the golden age of Pixar is over. Like in my mind, nothing. It doesn't get better than Wall-E. That's my favorite Pixar <laughs> movie of, of all time. Yeah. You know? Yes. Onward is just more, like more of like your standard family adventure. Mm. Uh, it looks like we've got Frozen Bruce. Do we get Frozen Bruce? Are you there, Bruce? Oh, Frozen Bruce. That kind of sounds like a fancy dessert. It doesn't matter. <laughs> We're this is the Laughter Heals Foundation. We're giving good content, whatever happens. So while we wait for Bruce to connect, let's okay. just say, if you're watching, hit that donate button. We're raising money to help support mental illness causes for gamers with their Laughter Heals Gaming Foundation. So click that button, get a don't get some donations, get a shout out in the live stream and help some gamers with Woo. their brain. Help some gamers. Um, I think I wanna, have you guys seen any ridiculous videos that you, during the, like there's so much amazing sharing of ridiculous videos. <laughs> Like what, Georgia? Uh, like what, what, Georgia? Hey, gosh, thanks for asking. Uh, <laughs> that's videos that I've seen. I want to, uh, our technical genius over mm. there, said, could you queue up the, because we, we may not have a lot of time, and I want to get this in before Bruce comes back. Our dancing duck. This made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, give me one second. And it's getting a beverage. And for the for my friend who asked, I couldn't see who it was that asked about my water. It may look dirty because it's got lemon in it. Oh. Wait, are you yeah, sure. We know you, you like dirty water. <laughs> All right, I'm back. Let's do some dancing duck. Okay, you gotta see this. Watching, watching, watching. I just love it, making me so happy. I heard this duck was gonna be at Coachella this year. I hope, I hope headlining. <laughs> Make me happy. Yes. Oh, there we go. <laughs> What the hell walked by in the background of the duck? Where? Go I'm back. serious. Play the duck video again and look oh. at the background. <laughs> that definitely looks like a, a labradoodle or some sort. Hold on. I'm watching the live stream. You say duck, labradoodle, duck, duck. I say alien. <laughs> There it is. Nah, it's a bear. That's a small bear for sure. No doubt. Really? Probably a bear. That's the way. How is that a probably a bear situation? I mean, honestly, though, anybody who has a, a duck as a pet instrument might have a bear. Yeah. I've heard of Stranger Things. Uh, okay. Speaking of Stranger Things, do we like season three? Yes or no? I'm a chicken. I can't watch scary things. I cannot, Ben. I have not. I fall off season two. 
Yeah, see, I feel like season two turned a lot of people off. Yeah, it wasn't like season one was awesome. Season two, I was like, what? I have other things to do. Season three is definitely better than season two, but I feel like that's one of those shows that was so good. If they had just kept it at one season, it would have been a perfect show. Yeah, but there's this. Oh, he's coming back in? We got Bruce back. It's kind of hard to breathe through this. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that's not. Well, then it doesn't stop germs. <laughs> you can't make a breathing hole. What's yeah. the point of wearing the mask? I'm going to suffocate myself. Yeah, I would say that's not your best look ever, Rain, but it's not Look. What do you guys think? I'm I back. Should... Oh, Bruce is back. Sorry. We missed you, Bruce. I'm sorry. Uh, I found out that Zoom is racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they zoomed my black ass out of there. <laughs> Never. Is Thank everybody you. as bored as me? There we go. You have no idea. I'm going. Fuck, I'm sleeping upside down because I'm going batshit crazy. Uh, hey. <laughs> What what is that guitar in the background, Bruce? Are you shred you doing some shredding? Yeah, I'm coming out me and uh, <laughs> yeah, me, and, uh me and Ben Harper are coming out with a uh, nigga locked up blues. <laughs> <laughs> blues album and it's dedicated to all the niggas that are locked up. I find out how they feel. Yeah. I have a little pet mouse now. His name's Mr. Jingles, which is ironic. Hey Bruce, little little minx one, two, three in the chat says cool head. You gotta you, oh, you gotta Thank She's you. a fan of your head. Thank you. Thank you. I have a good <laughs> head. I'm like uh, a giver. Of, but so know. back to games, Bruce. You're playing Marvel versus Capcom. Who's who? Who's your preferred uh, fighter in Captain Marvel? America. Versus Marvel versus you, know, Captain America. You're a purist. Mm -hmm. I love Cap. Got yeah. that Funko Pop Cap figure. Because you don't need to have the Hulk. The Hulk is just yeah. too much power. You did. It's too much power center for people to enjoy the, the strength. You know, you want somebody cutting so they can get into nooks and crannies that, that knows how to what, fight. What system are you thing? playing them on? I play them on uh, Xbox. Xbox. Yeah, Bruce Jingles. Uh, yeah, you want to know what my gamer tag is on, on the PlayStation Network? Yes. It's Girl. Viola Davis. <laughs> that old black <laughs> ass Viola. <laughs> it's Viola, Viola Davis. Davis and I had a kid and we got the name of Briquet. <laughs> anybody anybody watching on Twitch, add me on, on PSN, Viola Davis, one word. That's me. <laughs> oh, black ass Viola. <laughs> well, because it's it started on Reddit. I was on Reddit and I had my actual name as my Reddit username. And I wanted to, you know, write write a shit post once in a while. And I was like, I can't I can't flame people when my username is my real name. It's my handle. They'll find me immediately. <laughs> And as, it, as I was on Reddit, I was like, well, who the hell isn't on Reddit? And I think like Suicide <laughs> Squad was on. And I was like, I bet Viola Davis isn't on Reddit. Sure enough, she isn't on Reddit. And as it turns out, <laughs> she's not on PlayStation Network either. <laughs> it's fun playing like Apex or Fortnite and just hearing people react to the fact that you just got smoked by Viola Davis. <laughs> <laughs> now she got away with murder. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> By <a whole> damn. <laughs> that's funny uh, traveling I'm, something gimp says get on 4chan oh i'm on 4chan i am all up in the guts of the internet i just spend oh, most uh, of my time on reddit and frankly if i'm on 4chan you're never gonna know because everyone's anonymous on there you know who's <laughs> not anonymous viola davis <laughs> <laughs> now, every, now every movie i see uh for the, for the next month and Violet Black Ass shows up. I'm gonna just take <laughs> her on Reddit. Craig Ho says, Viola Davis. I'm Octavia Spencer. <laughs> I'm Michael Rucker. Michael Rucker, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> and traveling gamer chant, do you play games? Oh yeah. I don't know if you've watched the rest of the stream, but in between the, the guests, I'm taking everyone on a tour of my five terabytes of local storage games on my, uh, on my PS4 Pro over here. Right now, I'm halfway through the adventure genre. So yeah, I play I play too many games. I you, play too many games. So you're that deep. So you're that deep. I didn't. I never knew you were that deep. Oh yeah, man, I'm that deep. 
Yeah, I, I'm, I'm like a collector. I'm a, I'm a game hoarder. Like I'll, I'll check the PlayStation Store a couple times a week because they're crazy ass deals. And like, oh, I, I just want to, I just want to add to the collection, right? And especially like if there are games that I have my eye on that I didn't buy at launch price, like a Days Gone or like a Control, I'll just hear about a game for. If I hear about a game for a long enough time, I say to myself, "All right, I've heard about this game for too long. If I see it on sale, I'm going to buy it, no questions asked." And honestly, that that plan has not done me wrong. That's how I found yeah. Days Gone. It's how I found Control. And they're just like books, comic books. books. Yeah, what what, what, uh, what what books are you reading right now? I into the comic books. Tell us all about this. Lube. Whip. What, what happened? <laughs> traveling, traveling gamer says, Ben, are you paid to laugh that hard? Yes, yeah, son, I am paid. When you donate, <laughs> my girlfriend's <laughs> laughing. I am paid to laugh that hard when you donate to the Laughter Heels Foundation by clicking that donate button. Yeah, put your, give, put your, put your, put your donations where your where your chat fingers are at. And connect Help with you Reddit, and a Negro. Help with you <laughs> and a Negro. Play a game? Should we play Would You Rather? Yeah. Hey, Would ben, you rather? I just, and by I the way, team making because I get tired of mask and it's not working. By the way, your uh, your NCIS episode of uh, uh, your uh, episode of NCIS was on uh, last week. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's the first. I, I'm I I did a couple episodes of that the show NCIS like a long time no, no. ago. Do, do, who did you play? I played uh, uh, Ziva. She was the lead on eight seasons. I played her father in flashbacks. You played Eli David. Eli David, the, David Masad. the Masad warrior. Yeah. Don't... yeah, you're a bad motherfucker. So, now that you tell me it, it aired last week, I will expect a royalty check for eighty three cents to get direct deposited shortly. Dude, I just got I just got a check. We got uh, frozen again. Rag, but I just got a check from uh, Sound Exchange. I'm not sure you have stuff on Sound Exchange. But from what? In the uh, Sound Exchange, because your stuff's published and stuff. Uh, I just got a check out of nowhere that uh -huh. saved my ass. Oh, you know what I mean? oh, you got that? Uh huh. That's no, good. not the stimulus check. It was a royalty check. Oh, cool. Yeah. What was it for? Back. My album. Nice. Back 15 years ago, coming out of the oven. I did. I did. Uh, I did eight episodes of Punked. We all remember Punked. I was on the yeah. very first season, and I did eight episodes, right? And I'd still, I get royalty checks over the years because it would still air, and then it stopped airing, like in the U.S., and then it aired in like Indonesia or something. And, and, and every. Every year, I'd open up my mailbox and I'd have eight checks from the Screen Actors Guild, and I knew that was royalties from Punk. I did eight episodes, and they all came in the same day. At first, it was cool because you know each one of them was some cash. But then, once it stopped airing in the U.S. and was only like international, I swear to God, the last time I got the eight checks, I, I was all excited. I opened up the first one; it was for three cents, and I was oh. like, "Oh God!" <laughs> it, cost, it cost three bucks to mail. I know, and so cut to me opening up seven more checks for two cents. One cent. I even got one check that must have been lower than a penny because it broke the machine. The check just said void. Please, at the check said void. Please advise. <laughs> oh my god! What the fuck is that? That's what. <laughs> That's Hollywood, baby. That's what we live with. Yeah. All right. Did, uh, someone, Georgia, suggested we play. Would you rather? I'm down. Georgia, take it away. Oh, that was actually Reem, but yeah, we can do it totally. Oh, sorry, Reem. No, Georgia, take it away. What, I want to hear what's on the top of your mind. Okay, well, Bruce is a comic book fan, so I have to go there. Uh, yeah. Bruce, would you rather... Um, okay. Ant-Man? Would you rather be Ant-Man or Hulk? Hmm. Uh -oh. When you're small, you can get uh, better-sized clothes. <laughs> 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 they don't have big dude clothes because that's why they have shoe racism. I wear a, six, a size 16 shoe and shoes are always, big shoes are always ugly. You know what I mean? So I, but if you're the Hulk, you're immortal. You have, you're, you have you're the most powerful being on the planet. But if you're Ant-Man, you can always look up somebody's skirt. Uh, huh. Traveling Gamer says, Bruce, pass that. 
There you go. <laughs> and, that one's, and that one's for you, Ben. Thank you. I got the guest, babe. Right. Next time I, I see you. I do. I hope, hopefully we see each other. We're not fucking... Man. Remember, remember going to comedy clubs? Remember that? Yeah. I remember. <laughs> yeah. 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 Dude, I, I do. I, I do. I would, I would do a shitty gig right now. I would do the <laughs> shittiest gig that you, the, we, I would do, uh, 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 I'm, I'm not going to name a name, uh, but I, I would do the shittiest gig that we know. I would do that right now. Yeah. In the New York minute. Mm -hmm. Well, I wouldn't do it in New York, if you know what I mean. Yeah, New York. Oh, <laughs> Are you in LA? Are you guys in LA? Yeah, we're all yeah. in LA. Where are you? Are you in, in LA, LA too, Bruce? Huh? Are you in LA in, too right now? Yeah, I'm in. I, I live in Ontario. Uh, in Ontario. Right. Uh, California. So, how is it there? It's it's real. It's it's weird mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. It's it's very. Um, I think it's weird everywhere, man. Yeah, it, I, 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 I'm, I'm scared to. I, uh, I'm actually scared to leave my area. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you know the funny part side. about the funny part is like it's weird everywhere, but you know where it's the weirdest yeah. in places where it's not weird. Yeah. You're like, why is everyone yeah. acting all normal? What the hell's going on? They know something yeah. I don't know. Mm. Is that is that in and out? Did you get in and out? Is that an in and out? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I got freedom. I got freed today. I got you know. I got a. I got my weekend pass, so I had to get this. What do you I'm got so there? Fucking, I'm so double, double animal style. Oh, dude, you know it. You know it. <laughs> yeah. Grilled onions, everything. Just, oh. mm. So okay, I have a would you rather question. Would you rather be able to fly? Or would you rather have your superpower superpower be that you could eat whatever you wanted and not gain weight? Fly? Fly. <laughs> what the hell kind of question is that? Yeah. You know what we're choosing. That's like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, would you rather have x-ray vision or would you rather always know where the remote is? <laughs> I, know, I, know, I know where the remote is. <laughs> But dude, I was on. Dude, I was on, dude. I was on the road one time. My mother called me on the road and asked me where the remote was. Really? Yeah. Where was it? In, in her room. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Ben, you gotta do it with your router. And and uh, I'd rather be the Hulk. By the way, I'd rather be the Hulk. Okay. What is it? Some other, I think uh, Crash Crash Power in the chat said earlier about the Ant the Ant Man versus the Hulk. He goes, uh, I think I, he said, I'd I'd rather be Ant Man, but having Ant Dick would suck. <laughs> <laughs> You're hung like an ant. <laughs> uh, it's like ant Dick. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Would you rather lose at Fortnite or lose at Apex? I have no idea. Uh, what, what's okay, well, that question sucked. <laughs> Thanks, Ben. You choose another would you, one. Would you rather ask a good would you rather question or not have to do it at all? Reem, how are those masks going? Why don't you update us on your mask situation? Oh, oh okay. So um, I was a huge <laughs> Tiger shoot. King fan before the <laughs> internet took over. And so I'm trying to do a Tiger mask, but it's looking a little bit psychopathic at the moment. Uh, wow. I'm trying hard to salvage it, but it's looking a little aggressive. Bruce, the only thing the only yes. thing scarier than coronavirus is that mask. <laughs> that is coronavirus, actually. <laughs> so frightening. I'm afraid. So this is my fantastic. You like it? Oh no, I look at Bruce's. Yeah. Check out what he's got going on. That's genius. Oh, that's cool. Love it. Dude, uh, I, got, I got people buying them. Hey, where'd you get that mask, Bruce? Dude, I have, I have a friend at the at the printer. 
and uh, he has a print temp, printing company. And we sold or already sold like 50 in one day. Right. And 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 uh, now they can't find any fucking bandanas anywhere. I mean, I gotta say, I was surprised at the amount of people who just happened to have bandanas lying around. It felt a little aggressive. I know. I know. All right, I ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna keep the show moving right along. I wanna give a big round of applause to the very wonderful Mr. Bruce Jingles. Ooh. Bruce, it's been amazing having you on the Lapper hey. Days Gaming Streamathon, hey, my man. Sorry for the inconvenience. <laughs> you mean the gift of your comedy and your beautiful <laughs> smile? You call that comedy? I do. I, I like, call everything you do comedy, Bruce. I feel like I kidnapped somebody. I want the whole ransom. I don't care that it's beat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bruce, before you go, tell the audience where they can find you. What do you want to plug? Uh, nothing, because I have nothing coming up. Uh, but, that's, the best, uh, that's the best answer uh, we've heard all day. You can follow, <laughs> I have, I'm not plugging uh, You can follow, uh, follow me on uh, Pandora. Uh, Bruce <laughs> Jingles, B-R-U-C-E-J-I-N-G-L-E-S. And uh, it's the same thing on Instagram, Twitter, and then uh, hopefully I'll see you. All right. Thank you, Thank you, Bruce. You're the best. Thank you very much. I love you. I love Thank you, man. You, I love Bruce. you guys. Be good. Bye, Bruce. We'll see you at a comedy club soon. Man. God, God willing. God willing. All right, ladies I and gentlemen. It. I want it. I kill him. I kill him low. Thanks, Bruce. All right, ladies and gentlemen, before we bring on our next comedian, Zara Mizrahi, who is in the waiting room, I would like to say this again is, of course, a streamathon for the Laughter Heels Foundation. This is Laughter Heels Gaming. We are raising money to support mental health initiatives for us, the gamers. So please, Click that donate button and send some money our way to help gamers everywhere. Uh, and with that, uh, actually, hey, person in the waiting room, am I allowed to announce the special celebrity surprise guest at the end? Text me with a yes or no. I am glad I asked, so I'm not going to announce it because I'm, I'm glad I didn't. All right, are we ready for our next comedian? Georgia, Reem, we ready for the next guest? Ready. Ready. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our next guest, our next wonderful, famous celebrity comedian on the Laughter Hills Gaming Streamathon, please clap it up right now for the very wonderful Zara Mizrahi. Welcome to the show. She's connecting right now. <laughs> I'm excited. We've been talking about voiceovers. This girl's got a lot to talk about. Hi. Oh, yeah? Hey. How's it going? Hey, hey, welcome to the Streamathon. Oh wow. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So do you do you and Georgia know each other from the voiceover gaming world? No, actually. No, we but don't. Georgia I has already mentioned a lot. that you are a big, a big voice in the game. So can you tell oh. us who you are? Oh, uh, yeah, I don't I don't do that many games, actually. I, I, I'm actually kind of curious to hear how that works, if you want to tell me. But uh, I do mostly. Yeah. Animation, so um, like I do. I've done several voices on Family Guy and American Dad. And, uh, and then I'm also a voice on a new Marvel show that was supposed to premiere in August, but the haters want to push it because of this stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this stupid who, who have you been on Family Guy? Um, so I do a lot of the cutaway characters I'm on. I'm in what's called a loop group for those. So, um, so do, you, do you guys know what that is? Georgia probably. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so I do like a lot of the like random cutaway characters and then just like a lot of like sound effects, group chatter, background noise, like stuff like that. Um, I've done, I've done several of those and then I'm an actual character on this animated Marvel thing that'll come out and who knows when we'll see. Soon, but it's going to come out. What's it like working with Seth MacFarlane? Uh, he actually doesn't come in to record. He, they're, they're missing, <laughs> they're missing persons posters all over the- Really? Yeah, because he's in the studio. So ever since like that got set up, he's just been recording out of his house. And um, and then ever since then, they've just been put up like missing persons posters and like last seen on the date he installed the home studio. And all that. <laughs> yeah. Ah, got it. Yeah, I know. Oh, and I would like I would like to say to a couple people in the chat, the traveling merchants and who else? And Chubby Little. Cheers to you guys. Drink them if you got them. We're quarantined. It's a good time to have a beer. We're playing games and we're staying home. 
Zara, what uh, I'm intrigued by the the what is that lithographs behind you? What what is right oh, behind yeah. you? Yeah. Oh my God. This is a this, so this is pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so this is so this room has the best wipe. I I actually ended up quarantining in Arizona, which is where I am right now. So my fiance, who's we just had to push the wedding too because of all this. Really? It's been madness. Yeah. Um. So he his parents have this like kind of getaway house in Scottsdale so we just sort mm -hmm. of we were just sitting here and we just decided to take over I was like yeah that sounds great and then we got here and there's western shit like everywhere yep. just everywhere <laughs> but, like even in the house the house itself is so Arizona like you just they're they're like Native American paintings and like feathers and cool little <laughs> like sword arrow things like everywhere you look is like another wooden something um wow yeah, yeah no i i used to i used to headline a club in scottsdale they're very proud of their western heritage and i'm getting a request for chubby little boink boy to say his whole name so there you go chubby little boink boy there's my whole name and he also says don't tell my dad i'm drinking his hair conditioner dude how bad is your quarantine going to you go to drink your dad's. To even go through hand sanitizer and drink yeah. hair conditioner he's already uh. he's already gone through all the sanitizer do you guys read, uh, I do, I, I have a show, that I, a weekly show called Super Funny News Desk. It's like a John Oliver style news show that I do from, uh, from home as part of my multimedia show, Super Funny. And one of the articles, one of the stories I'm gonna cover on Monday is there's uh, this guy, I think he's in New Zealand, who had a team stockpile toilet paper and hand sanitizer. And this guy stockpiled $10,000 worth of toilet paper and 101 liter bottles of sanitizer. And oh, he couldn't so sell them. He couldn't sell them. So he brought them back to the store to return them. And the guy, they, they did an interview with the guy and it's in New Zealand. He's like, the guy came back to sell them, to return them. And I told him this, <laughs> he, just <laughs> held up his, he just held up his middle finger. So there's some guy in New Zealand who could have diarrhea from now until the next century. Wait, like, how bad of a business person do you have to be to not be able to sell hand sanitizer right now? A, that is a very good question. It's like, what? That's like not selling air on Mars. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> Speaking of Mars, have uh, any of you guys ever seen The Expanse? No. What's that? Okay. I'm watching it right now with the, the girlfriend whose feet I can see poking. Anyway, it's, uh, it's a show that ran three seasons on sci-fi, like huge cult hit. The people call it Game of Thrones in space. And then I think it got too expensive for sci-fi and they canceled it. Yes, yes, yes. But yes, the, yes. The, the fans freaked out and peti petitioned Amazon to resurrect it, and they did. And the fourth season, the one that Amazon produced, just came out, but all four seasons became available on uh, Prime. And it's, it's really good. Yeah. It's, it's like really? very, very nerdy sci-fi, you know, Mars battle with Earth, battle with the belt. It's really good. And the special effects are actually really, really good, too. That's Zara, is there any show that you've like discovered since being in quarantine or something you can't stop watching since you have all this time? Oh, it was so funny. I was like super into Unorthodox and then I found out it's only four episodes and I was like, hey, I just got into this. Like I, <laughs> they just like pulled the rug out from under you. That was so unfair. Um, yeah. yeah, they were haters. But then I, I saw um, the most dangerous animal of all. I'm such a true crime person. Are you guys into that stuff? Um, oh, yes. Yeah. There was the there's this thing on Hulu called the most dangerous animal of all, and it's it's the story about this guy who is adopted and he like goes on this quest to find his birth parents, and it turns into like he just uncovers all this shit, and then um, I don't want to give too much away, but it turned like wait, is it a, it's like a murder story? Is it Muck Duck? <laughs> but, uh, um, he 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 believes that his father was responsible for like a ton of like unsolved murders um so oh. like it's kind of questionable because they were so long ago it's like nobody can for sure prove it but if you see it you might be like oh damn it's kind of it's like super fascinating so saw that um unorthodox i saw um did you get into the tiger king oh yeah of course yeah that almost seemed too obvious to bring up but um yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was like a lot cooler in the beginning, right? I was like, I've discovered something. And then three seconds later, I was like, oh, everybody's watching this. Okay, never mind. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You thought you were like gonna un uncover something. You're like, oh, I can have, I can have an angle on this. 
and be the yep. one to tell everybody. <laughs> yep. Well, they're releasing another episode. I don't know when that drops, but it was so popular, they scrambled to put another episode together. And then they just did the Tiger King after show with Joel McHale. I haven't checked that out yet. Oh, I haven't seen that. Oh, I saw one, it was like, what really happened, Tiger King on Extra or something? I don't know, everybody's like milking this tiger for everything it's worth. Yeah, I love that Joe Exotic got the fame that he wanted when he's in jail. When he yep. did, <laughs> I feel so bad for him. You, but, do you, yeah. <laughs> well, let's let's go into the inevitable conversation. Do you think he killed it? Do you think he set up Carol, whatever her name, Carol Baskin, to be murdered? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, probably. But what I loved, what I love about that thing is that nobody is seem is innocent totally and no one's yeah. totally guilty like that was one of my favorite things watching you know i was like probably somebody's responsible for something uh in this like everyone everyone has a hand in this whole thing i well, it kind of it kind of seems like that one dude who's like running his own personal harem was like the least culpable <laughs> yeah yeah i love that i love that somehow but he's like the most hmm? oh i'm just you're still there I, it's so it's so hard to say like who 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 seems the most guilty of of what she's like I, I love that people <laughs> came out just like hating Carol the most it was just so funny she like I was just like this is just some lady who likes bike riding and has a questionable past I'm like isn't that kind of everybody like <laughs> yeah but you're kind of like you know she's cute she likes bike riding and murdering husbands you know leave her alone it's not like I feel like every yeah I mean it's it it that compared to like the hey cool cats and kittens as she's like driving on the bike path was just such a funny paradox I, I say it all the time like now when I FaceTime my brother and he picks up I'm like hey cool cats and kittens like I just say it all the time it's just become part of my vocabulary yeah but I feel like everyone's saying that now oh really damn <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was you, excited cool about seeing cool cats and kittens as as uh, it, she was. Is Zara? Hey, Zara, can you can you uh, take us on a tour of the Western lithographs behind you? I can't stop looking at the dead elk behind you. I kind of need to see. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a little bit. It's looking okay to me. Yeah, it looks fine to me. What is that? King of the wild horses? Yeah. What is that? Arizona terrors. Yeah, this is the most attention I've paid to them. Arizona terrors, wow. And then there's this thing. What is that? Is that a? Is that a? Those are uh, those are arrows, my friend. They're like. They said arrows, and I was like, yeah. Arrows. Yeah. Arrows. <laughs> and then there's this lampshade. Oh, oh my that's, god. That's amazing. Yeah, it, it never ends. It doesn't stop. Look, oh, there's another thing for okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> there's so much. There's wood and there's uh here's another thing on a wall. Dude, how many Native Americans had to die for this getaway home? Oh, just in this room. <laughs> <laughs> in this room alone. And uh, yeah, there's there's stuff everywhere. Even the sunset looks real western it's it's pretty hilarious well it is arizona so i mean are you planning on being in scottsdale for the foreseeable future any any regrets and quarantining in the middle of native america i think it would be worse if i were at home because i would just be reminded of all the things i can't do you know at least here, uh -huh. i'm like oh this is just like a weird alternate reality that um i'll just hang out in until the end i set up like a little voiceover booth in the closet mm -hmm. nice. um, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah, probably Georgia did it too. Like, yep, I got the full set up. Yeah, have you been doing a lot of auditions? I'm, I'm gonna do one uh, before tomorrow. To get it in for a game, so that's good. But I just got the whole new set up with the whole interface and everything because I needed the. You need to have Source Connect. You need to be able to call in. So I got that set up. I didn't have that previously. So now I can actually book a job as opposed to audition for it. Oh, that's great. how much. How much is Source Connect? Uh, six hundred and fifty dollars. For being honest, so it's not, and then you got to have Pro Tools, and that's not cheap either. So it's a, it's an investment in your future, guys, or the future. Speaking, of the world. 
Speaking of investment, let's get an update on your beautiful baked goods, Georgia. Oh, yes. Okay. So right now, thank you for asking. Right now, I have the the puffs all broken up into halves. So oh this, hell yeah! What? So they're all broken up and they're just airing out a little bit so that they don't like they need to be cool. And the custard is in the fridge getting cool. And any minute now, I'm gonna them in. Uh, don't make that. Don't make that hand motion again this is twitch and they're gonna get all you're, you're gonna get photoshopped girl don't turn <laughs> into a meme eat don't don't it's, egg her on so okay zara so i have a question mm -hmm. i um, was doing a bit of research before we started this and i read your two pilots that you wrote and they're like the most surreal like the the premises is so ridiculous and the and it says based on her life I'm like, whoa, hang on. That's so funny. Where did you find them? I'm so curious. Oh, your website. What? Yeah. Oh, just <laughs> the log lines. Oh, oh, I that confused the shit out of me. I was like, did I just like sleep upload my pilots to to my website? I was like, what what who does this? Um I might. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Um, yeah. So both of them are based on true stories. When I was a kid, my mom was a reporter for the National Enquirer. Really? <laughs> yeah. She, uh, she, it was like in its heyday when it was um, like at the time kind of well respected. It won Pulitzers, I think, or like almost did. And um, they would polygraph their sources and everything. And she was right in the middle of that. Um, and the way it came about was just so strange. Like she had just gotten divorced and she had two kids that she kind of had to like take care of out of nowhere. And she stumbled into this job and it sort of just took off. And she, she was like morally opposed to writing about celebrities cause she just like felt bad, but she used to like take me with her to go stalk people. And we would, oh. yeah, we would crash like birthday parties, birthday parties, weddings, funerals, like, all kinds of crazy events. And like, we, we went to Whitney Houston's daughter's birthday party. We crashed um, Drew Barrymore and Tom Green's wedding when they got, when they were married for like two seconds. Oh um, my God. I know, and she tried to like only write positive stories just cause she just felt bad. Um, but, but you know, do <laughs> like whatever she could write. And uh, she used to like take, cause no, she used to take me with her cause no one would suspect that like a reporter would be there with a kid. It's actually very clever. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she she was good at it, and um, and she would be like, go up to that guy and tell him that like you love his work. I'd be like, I don't know who the fuck that guy is, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> smart. Yeah, I was um about nine, <laughs> between like yeah, between like eight and um maybe twelve or so is when she was doing it the most. We like what were uh, what were some of your most memorable celebrity reactions to baby you going up to them? It was like some actor from like Quantum Leap or something was like Scott I Balcula. My stuff. <laughs> I don't know. It wasn't. No, no. It was someone else. Uh, was it the guy who uh, who played Dean? Maybe. I would have to see his face. Um, I can't remember, but I have the pictures. Um, yeah, but she she she's been to all kinds of stuff. When when um, Kobe got accused. We went to, we like went to Arizona actually to the rehab where the woman who accused him was getting treated for, for sexual addiction, sex addiction. Wow. Yeah. So like she, she called me, it was, I was like just home from school and she was like, are you, uh, are you busy this week? I was like, I mean, I have school. She's like, can you make it up? Like, can you, can you just like take the test later? And then we ended up, but she was like, I have to go to Arizona. You should just come with me. I was like, all right, I don't know what rape is, but I'm down. So <laughs> <laughs> we went, so we went to Arizona and like, tried to like, see if we could find anything at this rehab, you know, like we went on all kinds of crazy. We used to have to like stay at nice hotels if someone was like reported to be staying there or get married or anything like that. It was wow. kind of weird. Yeah. What's the, what's the name of your pilot? It's called For the Story. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's the first one. And then and then the other one I wrote is based on um I I, I worked behind the scenes at a porn company for a year, like doing their social what? media. Yeah. Which Wait, one? Let's uh, talk about that. Okay. <laughs> um XART is uh it was the name of the one that I worked at. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, it was. I had a great time. It was awesome. Oh. <laughs> it's like yeah that's not a bad one. Oh my god yeah, i am, no, I am, it's one of I am familiar with their work 
yeah it's one of the least skeezy ones um oh that's good yeah um yeah whatever was, you can get at that point <laughs> what whatever you can get at that point it's the least skeezy that's great yeah it was it's like one of those classy ones where you have to like pay monthly to be a member of it you know like that. what did you do for them I did, I ran their social media and that's how it started. And, and it was after, after we found that, like whatever I was doing, I was like writing some jokes. I was taking pictures and turning them into memes. Like I was doing stuff like that. And then when they found that their subscribers were going up because of obviously like all the extra content and stuff, they asked if I could shoot behind the scenes for them. So I ended up being behind the scenes on all the sets for, uh, like a li for a little more than like six months maybe like eight months or something like that and i just and like every how was that story. it was wild it was really interesting it was definitely like an experience that i wouldn't have expected to ever to ever get it was a total accident like i didn't mm -hmm. think that it would um it would turn into that and like it I, my favorite part was like seeing where like the work and just human emotions and like just feelings kind of like they clash like you know I have to perform but is it is it okay if you know I know this girl in my personal life like maybe we're dating it, now I have to see her work you know like stuff like that or like just if somebody is getting like ahead of you in the world like what that does like just my 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 I'm really into like the psychological things that people have to go through in order to do their job for some reason that's like the most interesting to me that's what I try to write about so that's why I ended up writing that pilot and then my mom's like moral issues that she had when she was working at the um at the thing is like kind of similar yeah those are the s stories I tend to write about the most but yeah the, the did, thing was fascinating it was really did you book did you befriend anybody in the industry yeah and I still talk to some of them <laughs> yeah really mm -hmm. awesome um, yeah, yeah, especially the people like behind the camera. I'm still good friends with uh, the editor and one of the their directors, and then some of the porn stars and I keep in touch like every once in a while. And uh, I mean, it honestly, as far as like porn places go, it was like they, they treated them so nicely. Like, it, and it was in a beautiful house, and uh, that it was just kind of like a party house. Like, people go have dinner sleep over maybe drink whatever or not just come say hi and leave like it was kind of one of those places you just feel comfortable hanging out at and then bouncing it's kind of like that it was great <laughs> I mean it's you know as far as is that the house still the thing is it still going um I heard that it's not as active now I haven't um I haven't looked into it that much recently but they're they're not making as much as they used to as much like content as they used to but their videos are still around all the time. Like <laughs> I see them, I see them come up every now and again, you know? Maybe. Wow. So, unfortunately, I think we have to say goodbye to you. All right, no worries. Yeah, it was so good to talk to you guys. That was amazing. I tell you, I'm jealous. My mom didn't give me any material like that. But all right, um, if anybody wants to follow you, where can they find you? Oh yeah, so Instagram is the best way. Um, and it's just my, my name, Z-A-R-A. Uh, and my last name, M I Z R A H I at Zara. I am I am following you right now. Yeah, I'll follow oh. you. I'll follow you all you guys. Yeah. Your yeah. video with those Argyle socks is delicious. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, this is the this onesie is the most uh the most uh, like cohesive clothes I've worn in six weeks. So it felt good to like put on mascara again now. I feel like right? oh nice. Yeah, it's my mask is finished. <laughs> is, that, is that your Joe Exotic mask? Yeah, it's my Tiger King mask. And like, it has a thing, so I won't get coronavirus. Isn't that cool? Oh my God, that's, <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> thank you so much. This is literally all I have to do with my time. So thank you. <laughs> uh, at, least, at least you came out of it with something, you know? Thanks. You're right. Oh, okay. Oh, we oh can... no, I said goodbye. We can have like another goodbye. That awkward like second hug that you do after you've already said, like you're like, well. Uh... Totally. Oh, we're both walking the same direction to the car? Yeah, that's oh. another thing that we didn't really plan on talking about. <laughs> I have so many socks, guys. I just have so many socks. So many Argyle socks that are just lying around waiting to be worn. Is that oh, right? I love Argyle socks. Okay. I love, I love a good Argyle sock. So you gotta have a good argyle sock. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be a quarantine without without good socks. And and I just have like, 
I have my like mama bear slippers. Oh my god. Nice. Maybe is that the way it goes? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know who I am anymore. There are no days. There's are there any like, do you have any like cowboys and Indian socks in the house? Oh I should look for those cowboy and Indian socks. You know they have to be here. They have to be there. Both like pointing at each other like they're fighting and you could be the feet and be like poof, poof, poof. <laughs> okay if they're not here i'm making them i'm making them like she made that mask yep do it yeah, do it oh my god oh yeah. my god um so guys i have to I'm gonna be back in like two minutes okay. okay reem that mask that mask looks like tony the tiger ate way too much acid <laughs> you know what the thing is like i wish it was frosted flakes but it's actually uh Guys, I've been like binge eating like shitty cereal. Like I literally, I don't know if you've done this in your adult lives, but like I went back to the cereal aisle since my parents told me I could only have like certain things. And I went like balls to the walls and got the most ridiculous cereal, like Reese's Peanut Butter Puffs. I even bought like these like weird, like um, like mixed cereals where it's like Lucky Charms meets Frosted Flakes. Like I have Frosted Flakes with marshmallows. Do you know how obnoxious that is for an adult to eat? Like it's not okay, but here I am, I'm making masks out of them. <clears throat> oh my God, that's amazing. <laughs> I've eaten so many Panda Puffs, like. All right, yeah. hold on, I gotta stop you. Tom underscore says, if I take a 10 second pull on the old vape, he'll donate. We ready for this? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. One Mississippi, two, mi or happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Ben. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Well, it's 10 seconds. Happy birthday to you. Right? Because two of those songs is 20 seconds. So that's 10 seconds. <coughs> you better donate. Right. Now he has an dude. <coughs> for the cause. Yeah, that's got coronavirus for you. You better donate. That's basically like how long <laughs> you're supposed to wash your hands for, is how long he asked you to vape for, right? Exactly. Traveling yeah. gamer. Right. Ben, ben can't hang. What? You telling me I can't hang, son? Oh, vape you under the table. Sorry, do you want to see my other masks that I've made just during Obviously. this stream? Of course. Um, I made this out of leftover cloth and some Sharpies and some safety pins. I'll just put that on for you real quick and then oh. I'll show you. Dude, you're crushing this quarantine. Thank you so much. Dude, you are crushing quarantine, bro. Thank you so much, honey. Uh, uh, <laughs> Dude, that is awesome. You should also, also, if those I are masks easy for you to make you should totally sell them you won't have the same problem that guy did with the and this is the last one it's an n95 the dazzle oh my god that's awesome so ambitious i love it good job Thank all you. right zara so nice have, to see you guys we have the man craig Schumacher. Great talking to you. tell him i say hey in the waiting room we love you zara mizrahi we love, love your you voice too. we love oh. your face we love your talent I am being told I'm going to hold up. Zara, you're on for another three hours. What do you want to talk about? <laughs> I thought it was, he was 745, right? Special guest. All okay. right. So I guess Zara, I have thank you so much. We Thanks, love you very guys. much. Oh, yeah. So good to meet you guys. Talk soon. Stay safe. Bye. All right. That was Zara Mizrahi. Ladies and gentlemen, before we introduce the man behind Laughter Heels, I would like to remind everyone that you are watching the Laughter Heels Gaming Streamathon. We are here raising money to support mental health initiatives for us, the gamers. So please click that donate button. I believe Tom underscore gave me a challenge. He said he'd donate. He didn't see you through the clouds. You said you donate, man. I took that poll. I'm feeling it. So you better donate because I did what I was supposed to do, my friend. That having been said, this is the Laughter Heels Gaming Streamathon, and I would like to introduce the man behind Laughter Heels, the, the, the internationally famous love master, the one, the only, a big virtual round of applause for the man behind Laughter Heels, Mr. Craig Shoemaker. Clap it up for Craig. Let's bring him onto the chat. I'm clapping. He's joining. He's I'm clapping. joining. We're all clapping. I'm one, one spatula clapping. There he is. Hey. There he is. That's right. I just Hi. I just wanted to say before we start that um, I have an announcement. I have been exposed. Uh, yes. For what? 
well, uh, ever since I'm homeschooling my kids, I've been exposed as an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> I, uh, this quarantine, I uh, see none of you have kids. I have kids and I have to explain this. My daughter says, what's quarantine? She's six years old. I said, it's a French word. It means sweatshop. Now grab a vacuum. I'm putting these kids. <laughs> it has begun. And Craig, we got Crash Power Live, who says the Love Master. Ha ha ha! You got you got fans in the chat, baby. Uh, that's right, Love Master, baby. I could still have sex with you because I can keep it in six feet. That's right. Baby. <laughs> yeah. That's the only criteria so, these days. I've been so watching. Craig, you guys are awesome. This is it's, 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 it's such a cool thing. Yeah, I would. Uh, I think we should. Uh, a couple things. I'd like to give a big round of applause to our tech team behind this, Noah and Ethan, keeping it down. You've done a great job. Yeah. This has gone very, very smoothly. And now that we have the man uh, on the stream, Craig, uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, Laughter Heels and Laughter Heels Gaming? Uh, okay, Laughter Heels was formed years ago. Uh, one of my best friends, uh, a comedy guy, he wrote Cool Runnings, The Little Giants, you know those movies? Yes. Mm -hmm. He directed the Love Master movie and he, he got brain cancer and they gave him three months to live. And um, I've been in comedy for a long time. And I said, you know what? I'm going to form this Laughter Heals because they say the laughter is the best medicine. And which makes us, by the way, we are an essential business. Yes, uh, we are. And it's uh, so I had all these therapy programs that we developed, uh, guided laughitation, and he showed up for every one of them. He lived 15 years past that prognosis wow. of, uh, of three months to live. And all because he had joy in his life. And that's what we want to bring to gamers who are. A lot of them are bullied and stressed and depressed, and we want to bring laughter and levity and light to them. And just like Gold's, you know, he lived all that time. And I was actually, we actually filmed it for a documentary. I was there in hospice. It was, it was his last days. He was in a coma. He was just staring into space. And I said, Gold's, I don't know what else we can do for you. I said, you're sitting there helpless. I said, um, what can I do? Can I give you a handy? I said, I've never done anything <laughs> with my own. Uh, and <laughs> I said, uh, I'm really good with my own. I don't know. And he came out of a coma and he went, ha, 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 and he laughed. And oh, it, wow. I felt so great about that. He passed away a few days later, but I was, I was happy to, you know, dying laughing is a good way to go. Do you know the, uh, the old story about Mel Blanc, who of course did all the, the classic characters for Warner Brothers, Mel, yeah. Mel Blanc, you know, Bugs Bunny, Elmer Fudd, all of them, Daffy Duck, he, he, was, he was Warner Brothers. He got in a, a, a horrible car accident and he himself was in a coma, totally unresponsive. They could not get through to him until the doctor just leaned over and said, what's up, doc? And he responded, <laughs> he, he came out of the coma as yeah. Bugs Bunny. Yeah. And that's, you know, that was, you know, an early indication. And Let's so see, I know that you know, you're- uh, Even being around laughter is a wonderful thing. You know, the comedians, yep. if they don't, you know, get into drugs or an accident or whatever, live a very long life just from being around that energy of laughter, you know, from- uh, Jack Benny to George Burns was over 100, still performing. Rickles performed until the very end. And uh, 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 so many of them, Milton Berle, all in their 90s uh, because they had laughter around them. And that's what, that's what this Laughter Hills Gaming is about, is we really want to bring something different to the gaming world. And uh, you guys are rocking it today. This is awesome. Yeah, it's been a great event. And I know your, uh, your son is a gamer. What, what, uh, what, what, yeah. uh, what games has your, your kid played? Uh, he's 15. I, we went to E3 last year. He said, this is the greatest day of my life. I was like, oh, I'm not getting it <laughs> because I, I, I'm out. My games were with a joystick. Uh, so uh, I, I saw I, I, I saw this and I, I got together with the, this guy, Greg Zanone, who's huge in the gaming world. And I, and yeah. I said, why don't, we, why don't we bring laughter to this? Because I watch him play Fortnite and uh, man, he he he's he's so he's so and um i i you know how to do that chopping thing in Fortnite. Uh -huh. i'm like yeah. can you do some gardening around the house you're very good at the chopping <laughs> so uh and That's then hilarious. i saw it's uh, i basically formed this business i formed the business for him and because uh it's a way for us to bond that we used to bond through sports you know traditional sports and now we bond through through the gaming and uh he's the one gamer in our family Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that it's a good way and now i'm learning so much about it it is a really good community and we want to we want to uh as a matter of fact when i met ethan he was so interested because he said uh, it's such a toxic environment so that's trying to bring is that you know 
is bring some joy, bring some joy to the gaming world. And it's not all about winning. It's about having fun. I mean, the way, the way I feel gaming is going, like it might be a tough, a tough go for gamers now, but esports are going to eclipse real sports very shortly. Oh, and the, you know, yeah. there's no, the, there's the rock no. stars of esports are going to, are going to be the, the, the big dogs. It is a little different for me. I grew up with sports and uh, I, I didn't have a dad, I, you know, he left when I was born, you know, something I said, wah, he was gone. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, I always wanted to have that, you know, the field of dreams moment, dad, you want to have a catch. And, and now it's like, Hey dad, you grab a remote, uh -huh. <laughs> grab, yeah. grab, grab a controller. <laughs> uh -huh. So it, it is different for me, but it's an adjustment and uh, you know, I'm willing to make it, man. We got to, you know, it, this is the new wave. This is what's happening now is, is the mm -hmm. gaming. And, and now that we're in, quarantine with the uh oh god oh. I, I i'm running i'm running this house like a prison and, and <laughs> these kids are on four squares a day and if they want any more if they want any more toilet paper than that they got to see the warden so craig are you um are you homeschooling your kids yes yes how I'm are you what kind of teacher are you well i i it's it's new math uh, you know i'm 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 old school math uh, I'm washing my hands so much though. I actually found cheat sheets for my, uh, my cheat notes from my algebra test in ninth grade. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I am so lost. And fortunately my wife, she's Japanese. I'm not being racist, but she's good in math. <laughs> so, <laughs> so if it's a math thing, go see, go see mommy. But I'm all about history, geography and all the things that I do well. Uh, but it's not math and it's not gaming, but I'm, I'm, I'm learning fast. So, so are you, you know. teaching, are you taking this opportunity to teach your kids comedy maybe? Well, the, well, they've been around it. Uh, my, I have a 21 year old who's actually home from school and he's, he's doing classes online nice. and he's getting straight A's, uh, online. So I, he can't wait for the next sequester. <laughs> and are, are you paying are you paying full tuition for his online school <laughs> yeah he gotta pay full but i'm not paying for his uh for all Room the other board. stuff uh yeah, you know, yeah he's now from uh, house, house uh, oh god it, it, it I, this is actually a break for me can we i don't have to go back to back to that you know what you know what it feels like it's like, remember the movie Shawshank Redemption? Yep. <laughs> yeah. That's what it feels. So I'm going to try my brand new Morgan Freeman impression. You ready? This is okay, Morgan Freeman in the coronavirus. And the different. Left Shawshank prison wearing nothing but a set of muddy sweatpants, a bar of soap, and a bunch of cons <laughs> from bed back. <laughs> that was, that was uh, my, de my debut in front of five people. And that's hilarious. And you know that Morgan Freeman in Corona would be the one guy who knew how to get a mask. <laughs> that's, a, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. And we're, <laughs> we're, we're, all, we're all comedians here. How are you handling not being able to get on a stage in front of people? It's driving me crazy because, you know, my kids, they're not going to laugh at me anymore. <laughs> they're, they're way over that. I, I have no audience. Uh, you know, it's, we're doing nothing, but we're really doing well with this. We're not hoarding toilet paper. All this damn hoarding of the toilet paper is driving me nuts. And you know what else drives me nuts is, is all the experts on social media, experts on it's going this way, it's going that way. So I figured something out, uh, you know, where we lead the world in hoarding toilet paper and it's probably because we have the most assholes. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Thanks. Are you guys into the the flushable baby wipes? That's just me. I I love the baby wipes. The flushable well, ones. Well, uh, we're we're getting MacGyver like here. Uh, uh -huh. we, we've got, uh, you know, you can actually use coffee filters uh, to do it with your business. Yeah. So, really? It, it does affect it does affect the taste of the coffee. I have to warn you. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. I feel like. You're being able to get like a month's worth of, of Corona jokes out right now. You, uh, keep going. This is perfect. You're getting a free Love Master show. I love it. <laughs> Don't it's stop, all, man. It's all I have to do. It's all I have to do now is coronavirus jokes. I'm going out of my mind. <laughs> oh. Scream and you'll be going. We'll be done. And you'll just be like, hey, have you heard the one about the Corona? <laughs> exactly. Oh, oh, here's a new joke for you. 
Uh, people are frightened of the coronavirus, but considering how much toilet paper they're hoarding, apparently they're not scared shitless. <laughs> yep. All the toilet paper hoarding would make a lot more sense if this was like a diarrhea disease. By but the way, I'm so happy that the adults are in the room. Ethan has not smiled at a single joke over here. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> oh, 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 in that case, you can only show <laughs> joy case. if someone's watching. That's, that, that's, that's right, well. But yeah, what's you're that, what's the a, facial expressions. What, what's that old, oh, the old phrase of a comedian makes a joke on Zoom and your camera isn't on? Was it funny? <laughs> <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that the old phrase? That old expression. Is that, that old? That's an old? I don't think that's an old one. Oh, God. This is all. You know, you know he's the serious one because he has the gaming chair and the gaming headset. He's the serious gamer in the room right now. Yeah, I'm in my bedroom right now. This is great. I've I've never had. This is awesome to have two beautiful women in my bedroom, and and <laughs> and, and they're not my wife. Can I see, Craig, have you seen my my four versions of masks that I have? I, I show think the masks. Awesome. I was I was um, in the chat room earlier saying you should as long as you wear one. Um, okay. you know, by, by the way, uh, what what is your ethnic background again? You know, Iraqi, just casual, you know, just normal Iraqi yeah. heritage. <laughs> so it's, uh, the, it must be tough for you to wear these masks because like, yeah. We... <laughs> Listen, Muslims have been saying to wear masks for years and now everybody wants to do it. Like we've been telling you to cover your face since the beginning of time and now it's in vogue. It's cool. <laughs> That's exactly right. Now everybody, th now we're all part of the same tribe, which I exactly. believe in anyway. We're all... We Welcome are to all Islam. One. Everybody submit. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're all one on this planet anyway. So let's let like, we should all get together and, and obviously we all need to find a cure for this. You know, and, and we're all dealing with this together as one. I think that's important to, to know. Wait, a all cure people. for Islam or a cure for corona? A cure for corona. There's a, okay. <laughs> I've got no I've got nothing to say about any religion. <clears throat> The problem with this, like bringing us together, the one thing for me is a smile was always the thing that I like used to gauge someone in public, and yeah. now I have to like look for their little eyes going up. <laughs> are you smiling at me? I can't tell. Or are you like mad that I'm too close? I don't know. George, <laughs> Georgia, you do realize what you're doing is very racist right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? Well, I'm well, so my, my wife is from Japan, actually. So that's yeah, awesome. shame on you. Your What's wife that? in Australia before this, she made it back okay. My wife is on, was in Australia. She made it back. As a matter of fact, these days flying is easy. She she got off that plane and I said, oh, I'll leave. I'll leave when you land from our house, which is an hour away. Uh, she landed and about 10 minutes later, as if she was in Vegas on Southwest. <laughs> like, I'm ready. I said, okay. I had, to, I had to scoot down there really fast. It's... <laughs> It's it's uh, it, the flying now is actually even uh, cheaper. I'm thinking about going to places just to you know just to save money. I need to save money. I, I'm all well, I will say so. The airlines like two weeks ago were like, oh, it's only twenty dollars to fly to Mordor right now, but now it's like back up to like four hundred, five hundred dollars. Oh, really? really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's because they're canceling all the flights, so now there's like very few flights uh -oh. leaving every day. So, right. Supplies down, demand is back up. You know, uh, I'm, as a as a father of four, I'm I'm always looking for deals. I'm I've, I've actually I've been that way my whole life. I remember when I was single years ago in Jamaica, a woman came up. She goes, "Hey, mom, five five J for a blowjob. Five J for a blowjob." I said, "That's a buck." I said, "That's a buck American. I'll do it for the deal." <laughs> <laughs> and I want to give a shout out uh, donation from Auntie Tammy gave some dough. She says, keep gaming and keep laughing. What could be better? Thank you, Auntie Tammy, for making wow, the donation. That, that's awesome. That's why we're doing this. It's fantastic. And, and, and... Whoa. Yeah, we got a, a $50 donation earlier. What? I, th I think it helps with having these hosts. We These, these are, these are uh, I, I think the only problem with you three hosts is you're too good looking to be gamers. Is that, is that racist? <laughs> yes. Is that, is it gay? <laughs> I was very game cyst. There's always an ist. <laughs> and the, I, you know what annoys me though is the cancel culture that we're in. Everybody can't wait to cancel, especially comedians. And it drives me crazy. We're, we're here to be of service to you, okay? If you have yeah. judgment, just go on to the next comedian, go on to the next joke. 
Let's not cancel everybody out over every sensitive thing. It's ridiculous. We're trying to give you laughter. And if you don't get it, you move on. I, I, I saw they were going after Joel McHale for this, um, you know, uh, Tiger King. He did the Tiger King and I is like the after show. And I was, if you, according to Twitter, I never would have watched it <clears throat> because he was so bad, apparently. And then I watched it. He was hysterical and charming. By the way, very good looking. I'm not gay, but I'd go there. <laughs> He's a good looking guy. He's a good looking guy. And he's so talented. And like I said, people are so quick to judge comedy. It's like enough already. You, we should be embraced. You know how we're. We, we, oh, oh, we have another special. Oh, you know who's coming up? I'll get off. Do I have to get off this? Because we have a friend of mine that's coming on now. Woo. And this guy's big time star, another Philadelphian like me. And this dude, so funny. I mean, Malibu's most wanted. I feel like I'm an MC now. He's welcome from Malibu's <laughs> most wanted. Oh yeah, no, I'm back, I, I've, I'm back on the <laughs> stage. I'm back on the stage again, and I thought he was brilliant in the X Factor. You've been X. Do you remember that show? As a, mm -hmm. it was, it was, yeah. kind of, it, it was kind of like punk, or it was, it was, uh, or was it punk? I, I get the ball. He was so brilliant. No, he was at the, it nasty. was the Jimmy Kennedy Experience. Yeah, that's that's what it was. And he is absolutely brilliant. I love this guy. He's on our I have a podcast, by the way, and I'll close with this called Comedy Kitchen. It's a uh, it's lead. Actually, Reem is on it. Yes. And we, such we a podcast. it's such a good podcast. It's me and Tony Luke, the restaurateur from Philadelphia. I teach him comedy in real life. He teaches me food. We extended it into a TV series. But leading up to the series, we did this podcast. So look it up. Comedy Kitchen podcast. It's uh, Nick Swartzen's on it. Our next guest is on it. I'm about to say his name. Reem is on it. And uh, we had uh, Maz Jabrani and Kira Sultanovic. And we just so many great, Bill Bellamy, who's actually in the series as well, along with Heather McDonald. It's a great series all about cooking and food. Two of the greatest things you could ever have in your life. What a combo. Well, uh, on that wonderful note, cooking, food, and gaming, and raising money, so I want to give a big round of applause to you, Craig, for uh, beginning Laughter Heels, for putting the Laughter Heels gaming streamathon on. We're all here because of you. This thanks. event is here because of you. And thanks, thanks to everyone Craig. who's donated. Please keep donating. And yes. uh, thank you so much. We, we're we're, we're going to have a very, a very happy post-mortem on today's event once this is over. I think this has been a wonderful event. And our final guest could not be happier to bring him on as well. So thank you so much, Craig. I can't this wait. I'm, I'm tuning back into the, my Twitch channel here. Because I want to see, do I say his name or do you say it? You know, hey, you put the event together, I, I think you get to say it. Jamie Kennedy is stopping. Jamie Kennedy. I'm out of here. I'm going to go watch. Thank you, guys. Woo, Thank you so much, Greg. Right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, you've made it this long. We've come to the final guest on the Laughter Heals Gaming stream a tele coronathon. Our <laughs> final comedian. He's a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of Craig. I perform with him all the time. He's just one of the most talented, one of the most warm-hearted guys you're ever going to meet. He needs no introduction aside from the fact that you've seen him on everything. <laughs> oh, only because I bring... Uh, Jamie does my show a lot, too. And I, this, is, this is how he, he gets brought up. You've known him from Scream. You've known him from Malibu's Most Wanted. But, but I think the credit he's most proud of is Tremors Part 7... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the one and only Mr. Jamie Kennedy to the event. Jamie Kennedy is on the screen. <clears throat> He's coming in right now. I'm doing my sorority snap. Oh yeah, let's how long I can do this. Jamie, Fun fact: I joined a sorority right up until they made me pay, and I was like, never mind. <laughs> really? I did. Yep, and then I, I quit. There he is. There he is. Woo! Mr. Kennedy, how are you, sir? How you doing, James? Dude, I was going to text you, man. I didn't know. I, I, I found out you were the special guest while we were on the air, man. I was so happy. How are you? How are you feeling, dude, bro? We're hanging in during the, during the teen, man. Having, having a good quarantine. Trying to keep yeah. the laughter, laughter coming yeah. up, coming, coming up, man. How are you? I know, I know you. You rock a stage. Um, Jamie Kennedy is one of the hardest working men in comedy. I'm gonna say that right now. He's on the stage every night. He'll do the, he'll do the big shows, the small shows. The man needs a stage. How have you been without a stage? Is it, is it killing you? 
You know, I've actually been pretty chill. Um, I've done a few of these Zooms, which is interesting. And uh, I have a lot of things in my life that I really wasn't paying attention to. And now <laughs> I'm like getting caught up. Like, you know. Like what? Like what? Well, I mean, I'll walk around. I'll show you, like, I'm a pretty good Swiffer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like, like I didn't realize that this is this thing right here. I don't know if you can see this here. Oh, got the fire going. Look at I that. got the fire on, right? But like that right there, <laughs> it's like a car. You know what I'm saying? Like, and they don't care. No one cares about <laughs> how to get in that spot, right? That's your spot. They don't care. You got to get in there. You got to get against the walls. And Wow, so, Jamie, you have, you, have, you have the shiniest place I've ever seen. Well, I, cleaned, I cleaned all day, dude. I also made uh, almond protein cookies. If you want to see that. What? Yeah, I've been baking. I'm like a basic bee right now. <laughs> Speaking of baking, so far? one of our hosts, Georgia, has been baking the whole live stream. Georgia, what's up with them treats? So my, so my cream is still too warm. It's, 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 I hear that all the time. <laughs> I don't know if it's ready. We'll see. Maybe it is. Okay, let's do this. While Jamie's cooking, I'm going to do my piping. That's awesome. We love your you piping. Well, thanks. So, Jamie, <laughs> Jamie, you've been home for a month. How else are you? How else are you filling your time there, sir? What else are you doing with your quarantine, Jamie? Um. Well, like I've been getting organized a lot. Like I, you know, like all comedians are on here. You guys will understand. Like I've been getting all my bits. I've taken all uh -huh. my tapes, and I've sent them to an editor, and he's cutting my bits up and putting words to them. Uh -huh. You know, so I can start putting out bits. Um. I've read a couple scripts. Um, I've tried to write a little bit of an old script that I was working on. I Zoom with people. I was going to call you when I want to talk to you, but I was Zooming with my other friend, Flip. We actually had a little joke yeah. session. Not, not that much, though. But I've actually been just like, there's days when I feel real creative, and there's other days, man, where I'm like, yeah. oh, let's YouTube it. I'm going to go deep down the... Unabomber. Oh, there's a Unabomber <laughs> documentary. Oh, and deep. You know what I mean? Like, I'll do that. Uh -huh. um, uh -huh. But, I feel, but um, just trying to get caught up. Like, I've, actually, it's a good time in a way. It's a terrible time, but to get caught up on the bullshit. Like, I'm trying to arrange all my shit because people want the content, I think. Yeah. I'd, I w I'd love to work on jokes with you, man. We'll talk tomorrow and we'll, we'll talk about some bits. I want to do a super funny quarantine edition, and I'd love to have you in it. Bro, you should because you're so you know you and I get along and your voice you get my voice I get your voice oh, yeah. I just feel like there is and it's funny because these zooms kind of sneakily cheer me up you know I'm not sitting yeah, walking do. around like a bum like all bummed out but I do get those times which is a little funky you know I also um hollered at some people but tell me if this is too much I'm out of batteries though. But uh, <laughs> there was a lot of people up in the park without masks. So I stand on my roof and I holler at them with this bullhorn. <laughs> but I'm out of batteries. <laughs> I'm out of batteries. It's $11 at Home Depot. And what, what kind of reaction do you get? <laughs> Fuck you! Oh, can I curse? Apparently, uh, the bullhorn's $11? Yeah, it was $11. Yeah, you can tell. It's just a lot of people, like most people walking <laughs> out, like I'm probably a little too paranoid. I wear the mask a lot. I don't, I try not to go out. I went to Rite Aid. That was like walking dead, man. I was hazmatting it. But um, for the most part, people are good. But there's just some, what if, you know, if you have a child um, and your kid's coughing, that's basically like a nuclear warhead. <laughs> Right, like, don't you think you're? Don't you think yes. you put your something on that kid's mouth? Yep. But people, yes. people don't care, you know. So. Or kill what the kid. Kind of Whatever works for you. <laughs> oh, she went dark. She went dark quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you gotta save the many. So just like, or you know, like save. <laughs> 
four people. So kill the kid. It's fine. He doesn't know what likes Speak, it. Speaking of uh, speaking of masks, Reem has been making masks the whole time. You should show mm-hmm. Jamie the masks that you've made. Jamie, all right. Um, so the start first with mask- that, that crazy ass Tiger King. Oh no, the vampire one. No, I'm gonna start with the, the vampire. So um, because you know, in the spirit of bats causing this, we did the- <laughs> right here. That's amazing. That's really. Thank it's, you. Right there. Uh-huh. I think that's a triple threat, right? Because A, if far enough away, it kind of looks like it could be your mouth. B, I hope it's effective. <laughs> C, you could also use it as a Halloween costume backup, correct? There you go. That's mask um, number one. Mask number two, um, I bedazzled a mask. So um, I like to go to Burning Man. Burning Man was canceled this year. Um, yeah, I was fantastic. very upset about that. This is supposed to be my fifth year at Burning Man. I go every oh, other year. This is going to be my big number five. So um, I had all these like leftover, like um, whatever they're called, uh, steampunk bedazzly things going on. So I bedazzled this here and now the fob mask. I'll put that on. Here we go. As you can see, it's very bedazzled with these like little gears and gadgets. Amazing. Uh huh. But by the way, I don't do arts and crafts. It's bizarre for me. And then, uh, in the spirit of Tartar King and our our dear Lord and Savior, so exotic, I made this, uh, this Tiger King mask made out of a cereal box. <laughs> <laughs> that looks so good. Thank you. I mean, they're I did like it. really good. How is their effectiveness? You know what? Like I haven't tested it out, but I'm afraid to because if it fails, then I die. So that's just a that's a little bit hard for me. But I mean, I'm happy to if anybody donates right now, I'll give it away to them. So donate right now if you want this mask. Do you guys know that yesterday it was National Bat Day? No. They actually kept that. Too soon. National right. Bat Day. Yeah. You can't do that. Yeah. It was National Bat Day. That is in that's an inappropriate day. Right? It's like <laughs> bizarro. And by the way, what do the bats do on that day? I don't know. Because I'm getting more people. Um <clears throat> Jamie, what uh, is, um are you playing any video games? Are you a gamer at all? Me? Yeah. I have a question. I did. I got a bunch of video games here. So this is so good that this is uh, the question because, look, Need for Speed. Do you guys, there's two games I got. Need for Speed or NF and uh, this game right here. You know those games? Yeah. This one is like basically a Timothy Leary thing. I have no idea how to even get around it. Oh, yeah, a little bit basket. Planet. You're in like a weird picnic basket. And this one, I can never get to the race. I am always seem like I'm on the practice course. Do you know how to get out of that? <laughs> oh, that's why you've got to get your skills. Yeah, back. no, little, little Big Planet. What is Little Big Planet? I just like float around a basket thing. Yes, it's a very trippy game by a company called Media Molecule. Uh, okay. It's kind of like a, it's like a DIY game. Like all of the figures in it were actually handcrafted by the company and then you, they're animated. So it's kind of like a platform adventure, like almost like a Mario type game, but all the, all the figures in it are real like yarn puppets and shit the company made. They just released another game called Dreams, which is an actual like game builders toolkit. It's a very trippy esoteric company. I'm but like- if you have a play... Yeah, I'm sorry. It's it's the most who smoked what. I mean, you know what I mean? I feel oh, yeah. like, how did this get past corporate? <laughs> <laughs> you should hop on the PlayStation Network and buy some more games, man. There's a big spring sale going on right now. All kinds of great games are 20 bucks. Wow, okay. Just download like them digitally, it. baby. Can I do that from my oh, yeah. PS4 so I don't have to buy them anymore? Yeah, are you right. a super, 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 super gamer? <laughs> I have 150 <laughs> games on my PlayStation. And yes, I, I am I am probably the biggest gamer that I know, aside from what? the people running the streamathon. 
Okay, so A, I have to ask you questions later. B, I this I know this has been my I hope I don't get in trouble for this question, but the other woman over there, what was that you were sucking on? I'm sorry if that was inappropriate. <laughs> but um I'm just trying to figure out my whole thing is alternative masks. Um, so I was thinking this might work, but I put a bow on top just so the germs don't get in. <laughs> I'm here for it. You just gotta cover the eyes. <laughs> yeah. No, she is Iraqi, so. Right? There you go. It works out. <laughs> but yes, Jamie, <laughs> if you boot up your PlayStation and you go to the PlayStation store, you can get, uh, you can download games from the internet directly to your PlayStation. And there's a couple of great games that are free right now, like the Uncharted games, which you should play. Wow. So I can go and escape for a long time? Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. You should go on, a, on an adventure with Nathan Drake. It's like Indiana Jones in a video game. Yeah, I've heard of Uncharted. And the un the Uncharted collection, Uncharted 1, 2, and 3 are all free. PlayStation's giving the games away so people stay at home and play them. All right. Wow. Green Puff? Yep. Any Look at that. Oh, my God. We did it. Home Green bomb. That looks bomb. That's for everyone. McMuffin. McDonald's, even. Not like McDonald's. This is from scratch. This is not. Hey, Georgia, I know you only live a couple blocks away. So if you want to drop those, you know, at my doorstep, it's like no problem. I, I would really like to. I got to confess, I don't think they're going to last very long because I had to do things when it was all still warm. So, you know, if you've ever baked and things are still warm, they look good in that minute. And then like 10 minutes later, it's like. Mm -hmm. That's the nicest way anyone has ever said no. Well, I <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's so funny. <laughs> Pinkies on that, out. All right. On that adorable note, my very good friends in the comedy world who are stuck inside, I think we have done a phenomenal job bringing some laughter and healing to gaming. This has been a three hour event. I want to do a gigantic thank you to the man, the one and the only Jamie Kennedy, who I love, who I will call tomorrow. And we'll talk jokes. Thank you so much, Jamie, for being our surprise guest. Couldn't have been a better surprise guest. Mm -hmm. Trust me on that one. Say thank you to our hosts, Reem and Georgia. Thank you. You guys have been phenomenal co-hosts. I couldn't have asked for any better co-hosts for tonight's event. Thank you to Noah and Ethan, the brains behind the, the tech. And a big thank you, of course, to Craig, who was on earlier, who is the man behind the Laughter Heals Foundation. Anyone who is watching, donate while you can do it live. This whole performance, this whole event will be live on our YouTube channel and on Twitch. So that doesn't mean the donations have to stop. We're raising money to help mental illness and gamers because we are some very weird people and we need the help. And with that having been said, hosts, you want to do a final goodbye to the people watching? Absolutely. Yeah, you can wear it. Do it. Yeah, say hey. goodbye with the tiger mask on. <laughs> hey, cats and kittens. This is Carol Buster. I'm saying goodbye. <laughs> That is a goodbye. Anything I say is not going to take it very seriously right now because of all the Italian cream over my hands. So I just know what I'm walking into if I start this. So instead, I'm just. It's too late. <laughs> I'm going to say this has been a lot of fun. And Reem, you're about to get some cream puffs at your door. Cream puffs yes. for Reem. And I don't know if Jamie's still on, but thank you I'm very much. I'm here, man. Thank you, guys. And uh, don't worry, I'll just be slippering. <laughs> Yeah. Jamie will be swiffering in the background. Thank you, Jamie Kennedy, our special okay. guest. Thank you guys for having me. And okay. that is it. That is it for the very first Laughter Heals Gaming Streamathon. Thank you to all our comedians. This has been a hoot. Learned a lot. Raised some cash. I'm pretty sure we're going to do it again. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Be safe. Be safe. We're going to be safe. I'm going to drink this beer and eat some food. I love you all. Thank you and good night.